Well, today is a treat. I have Bert and our friend Stephen on today, and I wanted to talk to them because they're having very normal, very regular, sometimes tedious relationships with their teenage daughters, which as a teenage daughter is pretty freaking normal. But these two sweet, sensitive men, I just wanted to talk to them about how they feel about it and what the, what they're kind of going through, thinking about, you know, their relationship with their teenage daughter. Um, Bert was concerned that everybody know that they actually have a great relationship with their teenage daughter. Just sometimes the teenage daughter is a bit difficult, but I don't think that's anything out of the ordinary. But I think it was a really good conversation. It was really nice to hear how they feel. I think it's good to, if anybody else is having trouble with their teenage daughter, to hear two dads who were like, oh, this isn't, this is clunky right now, or this isn't working right now, and this I'm feeling weird about this right now. So I think that's always really helpful to hear people talk about something they may be struggling with, even though struggling is a big word. It is kind of a struggle, even if the struggle is small. So I think it was a really good conversation. I enjoyed it. Um, we talked about um, things that wives can do to help them, Our uh, me and his wife, Kathy, and how they can improve and things they're really good at being a dad. And I thought it was a great conversation. So I hope you enjoy it as well. Thank you for all your emails and all your suggestions on podcast episodes. Thank you for coming back every week. And um, I hope you enjoy this episode with Stephen and Bert. <laughs> fucking the fattest I've ever been in my entire fucking life. Good way to start the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was fucking, fucking. <laughs> are you okay? Yeah, if, if I'm in control of my life now. You are. I wasn't. Oh, I wasn't yesterday. Today. Today's the day. Are we rolling? Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't yesterday. But today you are. Today I'm in control of my life. Wow, I wish that happened for me that fast. Yeah, how does it happen? You just make a decision. It's very simple. You okay. just make a decision and say, "I'm going to reclaim my power," and I'm going to show everyone how I can reclaim my power, and it starts with a five-day fast that's how you're reclaiming your power and then i and then i bench press today and i reclaim my power that way okay uh, i worked out with kylie what the fuck that was fun right oh yeah it was just uh, yeah kylie and lily i worked out with my daughter's friends but that you know i have to say something i think it's really a testament to who you are that they didn't see that it was just you and turn around and leave yeah. They saw that it was just you and went, oh, cool, and Lily, worked out. Lily banged out a murderous fucking workout. Uh, do you hear what I said? No, I wasn't. Listening. Okay, well, then stop and listen, because I'm giving you some power there, Reclaim My Power Man. Okay, let me hear it. It's very cool that these two young ladies, who you have known essentially since they were in kindergarten, yep. came to work out, I'm sure, assuming that George and Isla would also be working out, saw that it was just you and said, yeah, I'll do that. And yeah. worked out with you. I think that's really it pretty cool. cool. It was pretty cool. It was fun. That's that's a huge testament to who you are in their life, right? That you are a super safe person yeah. that they feel completely comfortable with and will work out. I mean, that's so freaking yeah. cool. It was I, really cool. That wasn't was lost on me. I was, it wasn't lost on me. I had a good time with them. I, it was funny that we, were, we did farmer carries mm -hmm. out to the beginning of the driveway and back. Mm -hmm. I'm so fat. My hats are tight. That's pretty bad. And so we I think it's called carries. a fat head. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, and then <laughs> How so. How do you do a diet on your head? I'm fucking just trying. I'm trying. <laughs> Does the cleanse help your head fat? Oh, no. I, I didn't. I, what if you're permanently eight and a quarter now in your hat? Now we got to get rid of all these hats. Oh, man. What if? My, what if Start all over again. What if, can you not lose weight in your head once you gain it in your head? Your head gets bigger. I think your head just keeps growing for your whole life. I used to have though. a theory that women's. It's called an ego. Women's heads. <laughs> Well, oh, you guys. <laughs> Good one, Steven. Back to what I was saying about your daughter and Kylie working out with Bert. I think what's really cool about our family group, the four campers, is that any combination of daughters would work out with any dad. Everybody feels comfortable. Yeah. What did you say? Everybody feels comfortable. Everybody. Yeah. That do you? I mean, maybe you don't understand, but I, do you understand how how really special that is? I do. I do. I do. I do. I yeah. Yeah, good, because that should be really noted in your little heart, because that's a big deal. And I think the reverse is true for all the moms. Everybody could be interchangeable with any kid. I think the moms are a little more, uh, the moms are a little more fluid with everyone. A little more fluid? Yeah, I think the moms, everyone looks at everyone's mom as an aunt. 
and the dads i think a couple of dads like i think i think the dads are fluid but i think like there's a different there is a very different dynamic i would say with how the children t- treat the dads versus the children treat the moms you think so yeah why what do uh, you they think they bully Steven? they bully eric and they bully eric like they legit bully eric the girls do all of the girls yeah yeah they do kind of bully eric but they don't bully you guys well they bully you a little bit they bully me yeah they don't, don't bully you steven, steven. No, mm-hmm. they definitely don't bully Tom. <laughs> no, 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 nobody no, bullies Tom. No, no, nobody grabs that tiger by the tail. <laughs> no. I mean, look at all you guys as ants. Okay. I think like as like a, like a. But really, if any of the dads were here by themselves working out with Lacey, they any of the girls yeah. would have just stayed. I Everybody think that's would cool. Feel comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Well, I mean, cool. they've been doing it when I when I'm not here. They they, they did it with Eric. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. My point. That's really cool. I don't think a lot of family groups can say that where every kid is comfortable with every adult individually. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's probably a cool dynamic. Yeah. Um, I really wanted to talk to you guys about this is um, I know that you're both struggling with your teenage daughters. Yeah. And I think that's super common <laughs> and I think it's super relatable to a lot of people. And I wanted to hear, I wanted two things to happen in this conversation. One, well, three. One, I don't want anybody to trash talk anybody, right? You don't trash talk your daughter. We're not going to trash talk you. Nobody's trash talking, right? No trash talking. Okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing. I want to. I want a true representation, as comfortable as you're saying, with how you feel about this dynamic so that, other dads can hear and relate, but also so that maybe daughters can hear and understand. Because what I hear a lot from people who email me, like husbands will email me and say, my wife's been telling me the same thing, but until I heard you say it on your podcast, for some reason, I just didn't get it. And I think that's really amazing to be able to have someone hear something from a completely impartial party and make a, a shift in their own psyche. You know, does that make sense? It does. So I'd like to hear what you have to say, obviously without being too, you know, vulnerable or whatever or anything you're not comfortable with. Um, and I also would, it would be awesome if, uh, if your daughters listen to it at some point, you know? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I'll, is that you ringing? It's me. Do you want to, it's Leo. I know I'm not taking it. Okay. Uh, number one, I, so wait, before we start, mm-hmm. you have, we have a, obviously a 15 and a 17 year old daughter. Yeah. Steven has a 17, a 17 year old son. Yeah. I was, yeah. you're let son. me finish. I was like, 17 year old son. Jesus, and I was like, almost, she a stroke. <laughs> almost 16 year old daughter. She'll be 16 in just a, like a week. Oh uh, yeah. Less That's than. That's crazy. Or, yeah. Just in for perspective. Week. So everybody yeah. knows what we're talking about. We're not talking about like a 13 year old. We're talking about full blown. In the thing I would like to teenagers. pinpoint the day it started. Okay. That would be my first thing. The day that I no longer became her buddy. Mm-hmm. The day that all of a sudden I became a little bit of the villain mm-hmm. or the object of, of villainous. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, because, because I wonder, and this is, I think, what overwhelms me is I wonder if it was something I did. Mm. Like, I wonder if there's something I did because I remember hanging out with her at the mall when she was a baby going i can't imagine that me and this human being we won't won't be best friends every single day for the rest of our lives i remember Mm -hmm. saying that and i was like i know that people have problems with their parents but not me and this person Mm -hmm. me and this person are best friends Mm -hmm. and she was so like there were things she did in life that were so amazingly vulnerable Mm -hmm. and amazingly loving (laughs) that i'm like and now and i mean and by the way she's not bad right now we're good but there's been a period where it was just like absolute disinterest and kind of like disdain yeah like what are are you doing in here Mm -hmm. and i'm like i'm i'm just i'm up i wanted to make you breakfast i don't need breakfast you're like okay well, maybe, uh, do you want me to help you make a coffee? I've already made my coffee. I'm, I'm coming running, running late. Do you need something? And you're like, no, I don't need anything. <laughs> yeah, I did, but it, it didn't show up. <laughs> do you feel that same shift? I mean, I don't, I don't know that. 
I don't know that I can pinpoint the day, but I feel, I feel like it's been, there is a, there is a point in the younger teen years where I saw this, uh, this shift uh-huh. and Kathy kept saying, ah, oh, it's just a phase. It's a phase. It's, it's a phase. phase. I remember her. It's just going to change. It's just a phase. It's going to change. I'm like, mm. <laughs> this is a long phase. <laughs> it is I, me- phase. Well, I remember once they got their periods, neither of them would sit on my lap. Once, some, one, once Georgia got her period, no one was sitting on dad's lap anymore. Mm. Now, I mean, no, I, I don't know if it was the exact, but it was like right around that time the period happened. And mm. all of a sudden, it it was like things shifted. Yeah, and it was like it wasn't cool to get a hug from your dad or get yeah. a kiss from your dad. Or, no, no, no hugs and kisses at your house either. No, no, no. It's and it's weird because they were both of them were, but she was always super loving and oh. cuddly and jump around and like climb and wrestle and just be silly mm-hmm. and you know get hugs and snuggles. She was that kid. And so I feel a little bit similar. It's like, I can't imagine. This is like, this is like that, that bond, that like sweet bond that you have that never goes away. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, where'd it go? Yeah. Like, why did it, why did it? And I'm I'm not saying that I don't get hints of it at times. Like Mm -hmm. you will get a hint of it, Mm -hmm. but then you get fucking floodings of the opposite. Like I remember one day I was, I was sitting in here and she dropped a, they were doing uh squats and she dropped a weight and i kind of was just worried if anyone was hurt and i stuck my head in and she goes what are you doing and i was like I was, I was, i'm worried if someone got hurt like what like i wasn't trying to be a dick right now um how does it make you feel oh, i mean mm. makes me want to disconnect makes you want to disconnect yeah it makes me want to disconnect you have such nicer microphone stand arms than i do wow you know it is the girls room um, it makes me want to disconnect. It makes me want to just go. It it it, it really brought up a lot. This is going to sound psychotic. <laughs> Bring it on, because it, I think that's what helpful for people. It brought up all my bad habits when I was dating. Really, it brought up all the feelings I would have, the helplessness, the rejection, the rejection. I would find myself doing things to that were uncomfortable. To like go out of my way to show that I didn't care. <laughs> I, I was like, it was really like going through a breakup. Yeah, it's a little psychotic. No, that's yeah. I mean, but I I can relate because it does feel like rejection. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah, you know, I understand they come home, they're tired, they're hungry, or what have you. But I come home and I want to say hello. How was your day? Mm-hmm. Or how was school? Or and it's just so hard to even get that like, hi, almost. That there's a, an effort put into showing mm-hmm. you know, that she doesn't want to connect. Mm. It's and it, it and so it it really does feel like a rejection. And, and and so I kind of raised my hand. I'm like, so what did I do? Yeah, and you can't bring home a hotter younger daughter and be like, <laughs> I'm over you. I'm done with you. I got someone else right. in my life. You can't cheat on her. Yeah. No, you can't toss her aside. Bring home a Puerto Rican daughter and be like, take a look at this. Uh, no. That's, well, what, I, that's what I do to girlfriends. <laughs> well, I get it. Yeah. Well, I know. I I know. Th- I know that Bert has heard this from a million women that are friends because I've heard them say to him, "You know, I was terrible to my dad. I was the worst to my dad." I didn't speak to my dad. I was an asshole to my dad. I mean, Mm. Fortune said that on the podcast we just did. And Fortune was such a fucking, Fortune is such a big love person. Yeah. There's no negativity in her. That to think that she did that to her dad. Everybody did it. You know what I did to my dad? I acted like everything was exactly perfect. And then I went behind his back and did everything wrong. Mm. So I think it's better, in my opinion, to have a daughter who mouths off or pushes back or rejects you openly in front of you than what I was doing. I was very deceitful. I made him think everything was hunky-dory. Yeah, but and here's then I the just pro- totally here, deceived him. Here's my problem is that she's going to go. I mean, like, uh, there's going to be a day. Maybe 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 she'll get divorced. Who knows? There'll be a day when she looks back and goes, "God damn it, my dad was one of the good guys." Yeah, there will be. And yes. like, 
No, 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 they absolutely didn't, didn't hit be. my wife, didn't hit my mom. Didn't, didn't hit, cheat on that's my mom. Your, that's your no, but, bar? No, but, no, <laughs> but, no, but listen, I'm being fucking real. There are Kathy, bad men out there. Oh, Kathy and I were talking about this today. Uh-huh. Earlier, I was like, I said, coming here, I'm like, mm, what do you think I should, where, where, where should my head be going into a podcast talking about Lily? Yeah. Um, aside from her knowing Lily and knowing the dynamic, mm-hmm. she obviously also has a really good sort of social worker type brain right? yeah really knows how to think about this yeah. stuff yeah kathy you mean kathy you yes said yeah. kathy sorry yeah and so i i was i i said she said well what do you what do you think is going on like what do you think is really happening and i said well i i try to first point the finger at me mm-hmm. right what am i doing wrong that's, yeah, that's right? what i did first and i've done that i've done that plenty but I also have to say, like, there's a little bit of, and this goes to what you were saying, that, you know, we're good guys. Mm-hmm. We're good husbands. We're good fathers. We don't do everything right. Yeah. For sure. But, you know, we live in a world now where men are vilified all the time mm-hmm. and in many ways, rightfully so. But are they grow up, growing up in a world where it's easier to vilify men? about lots of things and you know do they then say oh well the 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 biggest male authority figure in my life is my dad so as i see all of this going on to society in society how does that play into their the way they view us Mm -hmm. as dads Mm -hmm. or brothers or uncles you know do do gir- are girls growing up now looking at male figures and going, oh, they're lesser than because I know what I see what's going on in the world. I don't know. And I'm not saying that, but I'm not saying that's a thing, but it did make me just think now when you were, you know, Was there, it are, really? there, there, there are, there are, there, I mean, listen, I've, I've been around men my whole life. Trust me when I say if man, I, one of my biggest frustrations is when you grow up a sensitive boy, like mm-hmm. a like a sensitive, meaning like you, you empathize and you mm-hmm. and you feel mm-hmm. and you don't and you're not what you, for whatever reason you're not the guy holding the guys down and going put an ice cube up his asshole mm-hmm. when it, when you're the kid getting held down <laughs> getting the ice cube up your asshole yeah. like that's the like women say you think men are bad you don't know them you never got to meet them like we met them when you aren't around they're on their best behavior around you. And they're still fucking animals. You didn't go into a ma- into a shower in fucking ninth grade and have some senior piss on your back and uh, go, yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. That's, yeah, that's fucking regular though. That's what drives me fucking nuts about this like anti male movement. I go, oh yeah, no, I, I I know them better than you do. I, I know men way better than any women do will ever know a man. And it's fucking amazing to me because, like, I'm I look, I'm I've been I've been a boy. I've been a, 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 I'm sure I've been insensitive i've been an asshole i'm not saying i'm the greatest fucking guy out there i really am not i'm definitely not but i'm saying i also you know uh it we were at the we were a a place the other day when we were me and the girls and papa oh and uh and so uh, okay sorry yeah no well no i just i'm obviously if i'm fucking alluding to it i would want i I thought you were searching for it i didn't think you were uh, sorry 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 that's okay that's where we connected, obviously. Well, so we, well, I'll tell the whole story. I was just going to tell a snippet. We connected because athletically, Georgia is just fucking very gifted athletically. Mm-hmm. And she was, she got up to the first hole and cru- no warm up, no nothing, crushed a fucking drive. Mm-hmm. And I was, and I'd never seen her play golf. And I was like, wow, we're connecting, you know? And then, and, and then, we and then we had this great day. And even Anna came over and she's like, "You're doing a good job." And I was like, "Thanks." Oh, yeah. And then we go to the we go to the clubhouse to go get um, a drink and some food, and there are uh, just a bunch of fucking I, I'd say Scott Bayos, but like that's like it's just like it's L A conservative men, big loud construct like like contractors and fucking i i got i got a big warehouse downtown you should come by like big fucking men loud energy and i walk in and i'm first of all i don't want to get recognized them because i'm they're 
destined to be fans of mine. Yeah. Or, or, or I guarantee you they are. None of them are wearing masks. None of them are like have masks near them. I'm sure they're anti, not anti-vaxxers. Like, and so I'm like, I'm like, I, one of them is going to recognize me. So I kind of bake a beeline outside. And, uh, and then they come outside and they're even louder outside. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. And I said to Georgia, I said in a moment of connecting, like I go, fucking men drive me crazy. And then she goes, you don't know what it's like to be a woman. And I was like, in my head, I was like, I, no, I actually, I, I empathize with what you have to go through. I, I'm the one that has to go get naked with these guys. Like, I'm the one that has to go in the locker room with these guys. Like, I'm the one who pisses next to these guys. Okay, I think you've sort of twisted this into, like, you are the one that has the greater suffering <laughs> somehow. No, 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 no. So, no, no. I don't, I don't I, by I the way, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Is saying, I, yeah. I think what Stephen is saying is actually an interesting yeah, thing. Yeah, I kind of did think, veer off a little you did. sideways. So, it, I think that what Stephen is Steven's saying is an interesting perspective. Not that it's the whole puzzle, but it's it not. might be a piece of the puzzle. I'm not and, trying to deflect where no, no, no. I'm at fault. Or, no, right? no, like, no, that's no. Not, so. It's just, I think that this whole teenage daughter thing is so very complicated. For one, there's no way that you know what it's like to be a woman. Just like there's no way that we know like, what it's like no, to be no, a man. Yeah, I know, yeah, obviously. There's no possible way. So, but my point in saying what, that, no, is, no, my, think, no my point in saying that is, I think women and their like internal emotional stuff is so very complicated and confusing for a woman. I can't imagine how complicated and confusing it would be for a man <laughs> to yeah. be on the outside going, hold mm -hmm. on. You just told me you love me and then you just punched me. I'm so confused. And then the as a teenage girl, I remember having so many different feelings at one time that I was confused and behaving in ways that I didn't really completely understand. Um, maybe boys feel that way too. But in watching boys, it doesn't seem like they do. They still seem mm. pretty linear. I know why but, I behave when I yeah, behave Yeah, but girls ways. don't. And so I think it's hard for... I think men are traditionally more linear, more logical thinkers. And I think it's hard for a linear, logical thinker to look at this like tornado of a person which is sometimes what girls are on the inside and and understand them and have and at the same time to go wow that must be really hard you know it must be really hard to have all this stuff going on in your body in your brain that you don't even understand yourself and so all you're doing is lashing out at the safest places because i definitely get lashed out at two in a different way yeah. than you do um yeah but you, i get it differently but you go you go in uh like get in bed with her and cuddle with her and she doesn't like it i just force it well, yeah, I but think it's you, you can't do that as a guy i agree <laughs> i agree i have the luxury molestation i uh, know i know i agree but they don't, neither of my kids like it i just make them have it because i go actually you don't know you need this but you need it from somewhere you really do you you i know you need you need uh, love and affection and you're rejecting it everywhere and you actually need it Thank you, Manscaped, for sponsoring this podcast. I really love all your products, and I was just so flattered that you asked because this is a product I actually use that my husband uses and that I think is great. Obviously, they have the lawnmower, which is a, a razor that has a light on it so that you can keep all your nether regions trimmed and you can see what you're doing when you're down there trimming. I personally don't like to get a bikini wax. I like to trim myself. And obviously, it's really great when Bert's all trimmed, too. So having the light on that is awesome. Here are some of their picks for stocking stuffers for your man. Number one is a two-in-one shampoo and conditioner. They just launched it, and I am excited for that. Number two, Manscaped has a cologne-infused body wash, and I use it. It says in this copy, ladies, you should try it, too. I already use it. I use it all the time because I don't like flowery-smelling uh, body washes. I like it to be a little more musky and I don't, I don't know if this is musk per se, but it's definitely not girly, which I really like. Number three, Shears 2.0 luxury piece nail kit. I cannot tell you what happens to the nail kits in this house, but for some reason, this is the only one that doesn't walk away. I think it's because everybody loves it and they want to keep it intact. Nail kit, great stocking stuffer. So make sure you hurry to their site to ensure these wild gifts show up before the holiday season. And while you're at it, get 20% off plus free shipping with the code WOTP 
at manscaped.com. The code is WOTP at manscaped.com. Again, get 20% off and free shipping for your partner, your brother, your friend, yourself at manscaped.com with the code WOTP. Manscaped.com code WOTP. Cheers to rocking the best gifts of the season. A gift for him, but really it's a gift for you. I know I read Kathy and I book clubbed this book called um, Untangled that was really, really helpful uh, about raising teenage girls. And I went back and read the chapter today about, uh, I don't remember the name of the chapter, it was about independence. And what she described as happening when a teenage girl gets to about 13 was really fascinating. She said, what happens is a uh, teenage girl is like Dorothy. And at about 13, Toto pulls the curtain back and you go, oh, wait, there's a guy back there just moving the levers. They always thought mom and dad were the wizard. And now all of a sudden they see it's really just a guy behind the curtain moving levers. The metaphor means all of a sudden you're a human with flaws, whereas before you were a hero with no flaws. Both parents. She wasn't talking about Yeah, but I didn't find out my parents had flaws until I was like 21. Uh, oh, I knew some of mine had some flaws pretty early, but, but her point in saying that is now they're confused. Now they don't know how they feel about things. Now they're like, well, but wait, I saw my mom make this mistake, but now she's asking me to do something. And now I don't understand what I'm supposed to do here. Yeah. And they can make is that just really women. Cause I, as a guy, I never did that. I, mean, uh, I don't know. I, I, I think we also have our whole dynamic, our families. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. We we kind of have pulled back the curtain on all of the adults on on flaws. You mean the campers? A, yeah, yeah. A, kind of a while ago, right? Like, there's a dynamic where all eight kids sort of see Bert for who he is because who Bert is. In it, it, Bert's persona is is the same when we're all with the campers. Yeah, obviously when the kids are out of the room, it's a little bit more honest. But there, there's, and and that's the same of Eric and Tom and me and and a lot of the moms. Like mm-hmm. everyone kind of knows a lot about each other's flaws. Mm-hmm. And I don't think I saw that. Well, when developmentally, a, they don't understand it. What the book said is developmentally, something happens in their brain at about thirteen so where they that. See it. Where that that makes sense to them, whereas before that doesn't huh. matter. It's like all of a sudden being able to understand the Pythagorean theorem, where you couldn't understand that in kindergarten, but all of a sudden at a certain age appropriate time, you can process that. So at thirteen, their brain starts going, "Hold on, this doesn't add up for me." And it doesn't mean the parents should change what they're doing. It means that it's actually a healthy developmental stage in their brain. It's actually very healthy that they start questioning what's right and what's wrong. What she said in the book is you actually want that to start happening. Uh-huh. The The bad yeah. part of it is, is that it's really hard to be in it with them in the moment and to not give up or to not fight back or to not then say, because I said so, um, because then they don't take because I said so anymore I I, because I, they're learning to question, which I is what you I want. Wish it was that. I wish there was that questioning. I get a lot of just the Heisman. The Heisman. I get a lot of just like, (laughs) just like a lot of, even if it's not, she doesn't say this, but the energy is go the fuck away. Mm. That's the energy. And it's not even like, oh, I wish there was still that cuddly kid there. Mm -hmm. Like, of course. But the, hey, I'm, the energy of I'm receptive and thankful that you're even asking me about my day Mm -hmm. is, is limited. Hmm. If you know, limited. So, I, I mean, yeah, I get it. I get what that that author is saying. Sort of, a sort of seeing flaws, but not really being able to really uh, compute. Really, mm-hmm. like do the do the calculus on like what does that actually mean as to who he is, mm-hmm. and how do I strip away that he's still the person that mm-hmm. I love and respect, but right. yet he's flawed, and that's okay. And like that's hard for them. That's hard for an adult to sort of. It with, is, right? yeah. Um, I I think that's a great point of view. Um, I just I'm I'm still looking for that kind of like that where that where it sna- where she snaps back to that kid that was 
not just always kind of like ready to argue. Mm. There's that ready to argue thing Mm. or ready to be dismissive or reject. And I'm looking for that author that says, try this, Uh. try that, try this. Cause I've run out of things to try. Like, what, what have you tried? Uh, just beatings. No. I'm <laughs> um, drinking and yeah. banging on her door. Yeah. Standing outside her window with a boom box over my head and no, a trench I mean, coat. <laughs> Maybe pull. without the trench coat next that time. That is a good pull. Yeah, that's a good reference. Uh, the trench coat may have thrown her off. <laughs> yeah, wasn't he wearing a trench coat? He was, but if you saw your dad nowadays, a trench coat's not cool. It was cool in the 80s. That was, that was the part of the joke. I got the joke. I no, was joking like back. It. Oh, my God. I totally got the joke. I knew you were talking about Louis Dobler. This is bringing up a lot of fucking... Like, I can tell because you're like... <laughs> Covered yourself with a pillow. Yeah. You're doing a lot of staring off and processing. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm not comfortable uh, with it. it I know you're enough. not comfortable with it. And I think that that's a really wonderful thing to show because what I hear you saying is that you were dads who adore your daughters and you are very heartbroken on a certain level that you can't just have a cordial conversation and just connect or, 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 in a very yeah, simple it, it, way. But it's not even uh, like I, I can have a cordial conversation with George. Just I would love for her to show a little interest, in you me. know, like or yeah, just be like, you know, I don't know, just, I uh, just a reciprocation of of like, um, like hey, how, how was the road or how was tour? Or, you know, just anything, just anything, but like like uh, like that. And it's funny, Isla doesn't do that, but but Isla maybe is, it hasn't turned yet. But she is still like, open. She's open, and yeah. I think I think Isla and I have connected more than before. George and I were always a little tighter than me and Isla, and then when Isla Georgia started turning, I think Isla came in and tried to like help out mm-hmm. and and kind of broker um, like a relationship. And she would say stuff to me like, "You're really messing up," mm. and I was like, "Really? She's like, Just stop talking." Isla is a, Isla's a, Isla's a good middleman. I don't know if that's the best role for her, but she does do a good job at it, I think. Um, well, you know, it's interesting because living with you and knowing Georgia and knowing you, you guys are very similar in a lot of ways. Yeah. And Isla and I have always bet it butted heads, and we are very similar in a lot of ways. And so I don't think that's a coincidence. Uh-oh. I think, you know, you're, the mirror that your child holds up to your face makes you go especially to the things you maybe don't like about yourself yeah. internally is very difficult you know i was a lot like georgia oddly enough yeah i think you were like, a you lot know, like, like georgia and, and by the way i think georgia might even be a lot less um i think georgia might be a, a little bit better than you were, from what i understand from I was, your parents I was, a lot, I was pretty bad yeah and i, I you know it's funny I, I don't i forget i kind of uh I kind of what's it called when you, you have like uh selective memory yeah champagne memories of my childhood and who uh-huh. i was and i forget i remember just i was i was a pretty shit kid like i forget the things that i did that were just kind of shitty where i was like I'm, f- I'm fucking going out i don't give a shit like i went out every friday saturday night i didn't come home because everyone was down on south tampa and we were in North Tampa, so I'm not driving 25 minutes home to go. I just leave. And there's no cell phone, so you probably didn't call home. You didn't pull over to pay phone and go, so dad. Uh, yeah. I did. You did. That was that was the get out of jail free card. I would I could say it basically until whenever and get away with almost anything as long as I was calling and updating. I was like, I knew where all the pay phones were, and <laughs> I was staying out until whenever. I remember my dad tricked me and he was like, why don't you take mom's car? And I was like, I was like, okay. And in my head, I was like, yeah, mom had a station wagon. I was like, I'm filling that up with fucking everyone. <laughs> Suitcase of beer. And we are driving around getting fucking wasted. That's- I wasn't drinking because I was driving. I never really drank and drove. Although I did. I, I actually did. But I, 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 I had such a fear of going to prison because my dad was like, hey, you urinate in your mouth. <laughs> and so... <laughs> He's a, His not, parenting not, style sometimes it's, was it's, questionable. It's not on your back, like the locker room. Yeah, and why didn't like it? In ninth grade, I didn't like them pissing on my leg or back, so I <laughs> definitely disgusting. didn't want them pissing on my mouth. And so I, um, <laughs> I remember, I remember my dad. 
uh, I was in, we were in my mom's car and we were fucking partying and all of a sudden so I was like, is someone's phone ringing? Oh no. And my mom had a car phone. Oh my like God. I was like, motherfucker. <laughs> everybody quiet. Everybody yeah, quiet. I was like, hey, what's up? He's like, you on your way home? I was like, uh, I'm going to drop someone off real quick. And I had like fucking nine people in the car. <laughs> I, I, I have champagne memories of how I was. And, and, but, but here's the thing. I feel like. So then today. I feel like, hold on. I feel like in. Tell me if you think the same way, Stephen. My, I don't hope my parents never hear this, but I feel like I was so much more of a hands-on parent than my parents were, but that's not accurate at all. That's not accurate. I just feel like I was like, like my 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 dad the other day was like, we never had fucking nap times or bedtimes. You just stayed up until you fell asleep. Like my parents were a little like hands-off, whereas like I was like putting her down for naps, yeah, like stuff like that that my parents did. My dad was a lot more like he coached every one of my baseball teams. Always was there. My mom went to every fucking game. And like your my, mom was and a my teacher mom, at teacher, your school. She drove me to school every morning. I, I mean, I felt I spent I spent a lot more time with my parents probably than our kids. They just had different kind of like boundaries. Yeah, I, I wasn't more a hands on parent than my parents, but I feel I felt like. But you were very hands on for a very very long time when, until you started traveling hardcore. You, I mean, I blame I blame Travel Channel for. Uh, this. You blame Travel Channel? Yeah. <laughs> I think she's just a teenager. Oh, I just and as it. much no, no, as no, no, I, no, I, I, I think it must be really hard to have people say to you, this is just a phase and she'll get out of it. Because I, as a woman, I will tell you, this is just a phase. Oh, yeah, yeah. And when let's, she's let's out of it. Still alive when she gets no, no, out no. Of it. When she's out of it, she, it will be better than you ever expected no, if we're alive if we're alive now I, I, you know we should say that you, you know as much as i've characterized it as kind of you know significant kind of rejection repeated there there are those moments you're talking about on the golf course there are these moments mm -hmm. and it's generally around shopping for kathy right mm -hmm. like around the holidays lily loves going shopping and uh, uh, just because she likes to give. Yeah. And so it is perfect bonding because we can go out and she loves to like pick out things and we have a great time. Amazing. Oh, I, I've looked for, look forward to that every year now, but it's like these moments that aren't really about her or me. Uh -huh. They're just about something else. And uh -huh. I guess that's like golf. That's kind of like what I have to hold on to yeah. for a while and be yeah. the adult, mm -hmm. even though, and that's, I think the other thing, and I would, I don't know if you feel this way about Georgia, but Lily is pretty mature for a, a 15, almost 16 year old, mm -hmm. right? Like, yeah. and I think Georgia's pretty, you know, yep. they're pretty mature kids, right? But it, in many ways, I, I feel like they should be a little bit more understanding of the dynamic. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, they're just, they're just kids. They're just uh, yeah. still, still trying to figure it out. And they're not kids who have just been out on their own, going to overnight camps, just exploring. They've been pretty much sheltered. Mm -hmm. They're not really, they don't really do that much. No. So it's, I don't blame them. I mean, them. Halloween, they went to a movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like they went to a party or a concert. No. They're, they're good they kids. They went to a movie. That, you know what I miss? And maybe, maybe the things, maybe I, I just miss the things, the things that I loved got replaced with just different things that I wasn't ready for. Oh, yeah. That is a great perspective i that is a good perspective because i think that is true because you know at a certain point i'll tell you my dad's is anyone hearing my stomach i do yeah, yeah. it's yeah. this fucking cleanse it's the cleanse I'm, it's my stomach's going like wait how come we're not stuffed right now <laughs> who wants to shit everything out oh geez well i know so what you said rings really true to me because my dad has always had a really hard time transitioning into my next phase of life. Mm. So when it was time for me to go to college, he, he had a really hard time. And then when I moved to New York, he had a really hard time. And then when we found out we were pregnant, he said, this is ruining your life. He had a really hard time moving from phase to phase. And that what's hard, that was hard as a daughter, that was hard for me because then not only did I have to take care of myself, I'd have to take care of my dad and I'd have to be really conscious of everything I did and said and have to take such care of him because he was so upset that 
I was moving to a natural next place. Yeah, yeah. Right? It's a natural next place to get married and have kids. That's, that's what every dad should want for their daughter. And he did want it. Of course, but he had it. You remember that. Yeah. It was really hard for him. He wasn't ready to move to the next phase. Put Leanne on the phone. Yeah, he was not ready. And so that's a great example, maybe, of not you're not like my dad in that way, but that may be something similar that's happening is that she's already moved to third base and you're like, hold on, I wasn't finished teaching. Can we not about use second. the base analogy? Right okay, now? sorry, sorry, yeah, sorry. Jesus Christ. <laughs> You know what I mean. She's in the back seat of the car and you're still up front. Like, <laughs> Shut up. You're yeah. in your trench coat, but whatever. <laughs> but that's a really great insight. I wonder if that is true. I wasn't ready for them to move into this phase either. I really liked the not, little I girl mean, part. And now, but this is where we are. So your choice is. I think maybe. I mean, I'm, I'm you know, willing to accept that that's, you know, a potential solution. Or part of the pie. Or part of the pie. But, mm -hmm. you know, I feel like I am, to some degree, very excited for her next phase. Sure. I'm very excited for high school. I'm really excited that she thinks she knows what she wants to do, maybe, for her career. And I I was trying to engage in conversations about that for years. I'm like, okay, great. Try to bring it out. We know a little bit about that. Let's talk about that. And, and it was just so dismissive for such a long time. I welcome, I want to know more, but it's the asking. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, you ask these questions to try to get to the, to try to engage and get the connection. Uh, and maybe it's just timing. Like I got to find the right timing. And there's so few times where it's like, you know, there's a moment where she wants to just be like, okay, dad, let's talk. Mm -hmm. That, and I think that you're onto something with golf. I think you're really on it. You... You, a long time ago, would wake up early and you and Georgia by yourselves, anytime we went on vacation somewhere, would go walk on the beach, go get coffee, go get breakfast. And that kind of stopped. And I'm, I don't know who stopped it or why. I have no idea. But that was always a time where you guys connected. And if you had that same experience at golf, those are little clues. And you have it with yeah. shopping of when that can take place. I, when you were saying that about golf, I was thinking about when I connected with my dad when I was a teenager. And it was at the lake. So if I, I go to the lake, get in a boat, totally connected. The rest of the time, maybe, maybe not so much. But if, as soon as we got in the boat, I was completely there. So maybe that's part of what's happening just in this phase of your life. Maybe I'll take them golfing with tomorrow. your teenagers. Is that it? It can't just be as as free and Great. easy as it Lily was for before. Me <laughs> right? I don't know. I don't like it watching. I don't like watching Bert have his heart broken. Oh. You know, because sometimes <laughs> she is so dismissive and he just crumbles. And I feel so bad because I don't think she's she's Bert. One time got so hurt he was like, "She's just black on the inside, just <laughs> black on the inside." And I was like, "She's actually not." She's actually just 17. And if you look at her as a 17 year old, she's actually pretty good. I mean, you know, like if I say, go pick up Isla, she will. I may get a little bit of attitude, but she'll go do it. She, I'll go to the store for you. I'll run do this for you. She's actually all in all really pretty great. But then he gets so hurt. It's like, she's black on the inside. She's a hateful human being. And I'm like, she, he just says this to me, by the way, not to Georgia. But he has every right to have those feelings. You just can't act on those feelings with her. Right. And you can't ever give up on her. Right. Because if you give up on her, then you're teaching her to give up on herself. Of course. And you can't do that. And then you're teaching her. No, but then I also wonder, like, so as a parent mm -hmm. or as a good friend or sibling, you you take the good with the bad, right? Yeah. You're able to you're able to sort of continuously accept the fact that sometimes that family member will treat you poorly and you still love them. And it comes, why? Because there's that friendship or relationship, right? But what is it like? I go back to like, how am I setting herself, her up for success mm -hmm. in relationships in the future with other people? Great with call, other, with, Steven. Thank you. That's with, why with, we need to lock them in the room and show them how to love. <laughs> Just bear hugs. No, the, 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 you know, like 
when she she goes to love whomever she's going to love, what does that what does that look like because of how what she's modeled? I don't know. Like this, I get I get out over my skis here on like trying to get into the psychology of it. But you know, I'm trying to do a good job to make sure that whatever it is that uh, I I instill in her. She carries forward in a positive way because right. I know some of the shit will seep in there too, and so well, yeah. I'll damage a little bit. Yeah, right. We all will, and I'm totally. But how do I make sure that there are certain things that in this dynamic where I continuously get this rejection, where I finally put my foot down and go, okay, hold on, you actually can't treat me like that. That's mm-hmm. actually yeah. not okay. Right. And I, I try to regulate that a lot more now. Mm-hmm as it started, whenever it started, however many years ago, it was hard to just be real super even about it. Right. Um, I remember one time we were here. We were working out on a Saturday with Lacey and there was, she was doing something and I was like, great. And I said, I was like cheering her on and something. And others were too. Lacey was too. And she just barked at me and for just... Now, I don't know how many people heard it or didn't hear it, but it was loud enough and rude enough that I said something on the way home. Mm -hmm. And it was like very even. I was really proud of how I just kind of zeroed in on the point and didn't get frustrated or angry or yell. And and then, and that resonated that she heard that. Mm. But I just don't, you know, I don't know if I do that r- right enough times mm. to make her effective in relationships going forward. If Georgia is going to get her, her get dumped by the first guy she gets dumped by, and she's going to be like, "Oh my god, I'm acting like my dad." <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I don't know. Like I, I'm walking by this house, like I'm trying to get his attention. This is what my dad did. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yeah, that's. It's a really good point. I think one thing that we have to do is to model. Yeah. good relationship so if you model a good relationship with kathy then they learn more from that than i think the relationship with you as far as uh, how yeah. to be in a relationship with well, they, they, they're gonna they're, I, that's what the one thing i was saying earlier is they're going to at one point they're when they start dating and get, getting serious and i was saying a divorce i know that you didn't understand what i was trying to say i was saying like in the future yeah, people do get divorced a lot of people get divorced if, if they do happen to get divorced then we're going to look back and go Man, I was shitty to my dad, or my I, I I was distant to my dad, and he is a really great guy. Like he was a really great guy. Like, like he fucking he did everything for us. Like that's like you know it's like it's like the trip to Boulder. And I, and I, here's the other thing. I I want to I want to put the blame on me because I don't really I can't put a ton of blame on her because she's just being natural Mm -hmm. i don't think i i don't think it's not malicious it's not malicious it's not malicious it's it's actually the most comfortable thing for her to do exactly and 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 so there's no maliciousness in it that's right and and i often forget like when we went to boulder and i want her to be so excited about school and then literally and then she wasn't and then we kind of got into a little bit of a tiff and I had a panic attack at the airport and it was kind of like, fuck, what a great week for me to perform at Red Rocks. And then it kind of fizzle out like this a little bit. And uh, and I forget, I, I, I wasn't until like two weeks later mm-hmm. when she got accepted to a college mm-hmm. where I was like, oh, she's she's worried she's not going to get in any colleges. Right. She don't want to look... Ex- She's not doing this to me. No. She's doing this to, because it's comfortable for her. She's protecting She's herself. She's protecting herself. She don't want to go, this school's great. I really hope I get in here. What fucking fool babes like that? <laughs> like, and I remember, I remember my dad being like, so you excited for Florida State? And I was like, I don't know. I mean, I don't really, I don't, I'm not really sure where I want to go to school. I only applied to fucking Florida State and Florida. That's it. And I didn't get into Florida. But I got into Florida State like early. I got into Florida State really early, like during fall ball. And I remember getting in Florida. I was like, I'm going to Florida State. Fuck everywhere else. And the second that I got accepted, I was like, I'm in. Now I'm comfortable. All stress Everything, is gone. All stress is gone. But she's wired exactly like you. Yeah, exactly you like You didn't me. have the relative. You mm. didn't, for until two weeks later, figure out, oh, hold on. She was protecting herself. And then and then I didn't get to see her at that other school that you were with her at. And then when she 
got accepted when she was there. Mm -hmm. She was, and I was like, I wish, yeah. I wish I'd been there, but I, I was like, I bet I would have fucked that up because I would have done stuff. Why? Because I, I do stuff. I do stuff to fuck things up on accident. I don't even know I'm fucking things up. <laughs> like, you know what happened? You know, when sh things shifted mm -hmm. uh, at, at, I can say Boulder because I don't think she wants to go to school there. But, um, is I got excited. I like Boulder a lot. I fucking really liked it. And Isla liked it. I was like, I was like, I'm fucking going here. And we, Isla and I went in and bought merch. <laughs> and it was about her. Yeah. And, but we bought sweatshirts. And I know. And George, George was and like, there, I'm already going here. They've already decided for me. Uh, yeah. And this and was, was like, her journey. She and I was, was supposed like, to, you fire hosed her. Or maybe I did. And then I was like, oh, I'm sure I'm guilty of that. Fire hosing. I think we just get, here's the thing too, I say to Bert all the time. It must be really hard for our kids to live with two extremely dynamic, very kind of forceful personalities because Bert's a, a definitely a dynamic, forceful personality. I am no wallflower. You know, I am not someone who sits over on the side mealy mouthed. No. I am a very loud, very opinionated, very strong personality and it makes for a crowded house. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I would want to be my child to show up and have their own personality and their own opinions. It's, it's a loud house already. So if I try to keep that in mind and I try to keep it kind of at in perspective with what yeah. they're going through, but <clears throat> I don't know. Daughters are so complicated. I know when I was her age, um, I was most concerned with running my own show to the point where I would lie to run my own show. Um, I wanted absolute independence. Checking to see where she is on. I wanted, I wanted autonomy. Yeah. I wanted everybody out of my business. What the fuck she doing? I wanted to be a grown up before I was ready. Yeah. And it's really frustrating when you have someone that you have to be accountable to when you really believe that you've got it all going on. Yeah, I, that's good. And I think, um, I mean, Lily is, I, I think, yeah, I think she's got a lot figured out, but I think she pretends to, wow, that stomach is loud. <laughs> can you, Halston, Halston, can you hear it? Halston, lie often. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's some cleanse. Yeah. I Wait. hope that's your stomach and not your bowels. So are you really, you're like not eating cleanse? No, like, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not. He's doing a program. I'm, I'm doing a program. I'm doing a five day cleanse. And so all I've had today is a a <laughs> a plant based nut bar and a bowl of squash soup, and uh, and my face feels numb. And I'm <laughs> and I realize you know I'm I'm just like normally I think that they go hey you should do a cleanse is a good idea, but no one like looks at my lifestyle and goes you know you're averaging a couple bottles of wine a night you're smoking yeah. cigars you're yeah. smoking weed is, hey man just hop on this cleanse you're gonna be fine. And how so, is that gonna you're gonna go I back to the road? Oh no, I, I don't know. I don't. I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about tonight. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm worried about like, night. like yeah, because I'm like I, you know, I'm gonna. I've been, I'm like they're like expect headaches, and I'm like they're saying that for the average person. What's it's gonna so, happen for me? Well, okay. Anyway, I'm anyway. sorry. Sorry. No, yeah. no, that's okay. Your st it was not you that interrupted. It was your stomach. It Go was on. your stomach. I remember yeah. my first disconnect with Georgia was uh -huh. when I'm, I remember. I remember saying to her, um, "Hey, get off your phone." I'm looking to see if where Georgia is. Why? Because I'm fucking. I'm wondering why she's. She listen. This is a Bert Kreischer that was uh, in my kitchen this morning. The uh, Bert in a skirt. So she's dressed to go out, and I was like, "Where are you going?" She said, "I'm going to go grab some food with some friends." I said, "Who are you going with?" I'm going with Luke and Maria and maybe Haley. Haley's a maybe. I was like, "Oh, so you'll be in the neighborhood?" She went, "Yeah, until plans change." And I go, what does that mean? She said, well, you know, we'll hang out and then I'll see if the day's going to continue with my neighborhood friends or if the day's going to continue with my high school friends. I'll see where I end up, but I'm definitely sleeping over at someone's house tonight. And I went, what? <laughs> I was like, hold on. Hold on. Are you leaving like for the day? She was like, I don't know. I'm just going to say where the day brings me. I'm just going to see where it goes. Freedom. And I was like, this is Bert Kreischer's daughter. <laughs> she, she was the one. I own my day. She was That's the one. <laughs> When, she, when we were like, I remember when we were in the old house and the girls were in the, um, back bedroom. Yeah. And I said, uh, we're going over the hay slips. And she's like, tonight's not a good night. She was in like fucking fifth, fifth grade. Yeah. She's like, tonight's not a good night for that dad. And I was like, what? She was like, I, I, I've got a lot. 
I don't want to go over. So let's, we're not, I, I don't think we're all going to go over. And I was like, you don't tell me what I do. She was like, I'm telling you, I, I don't, I don't want to go over. And I said, no, you're going over. So get your shit ready. You're going. And she was like, I don't want to. And I was like, what do you mean? I remember being like, who the fuck are you? Like, I never got to tell my parents I didn't want to do something. I didn't, I don't even remember like, They'd be like, get in the car. We're but going. We're driving to Philadelphia. Your parents never did anything. Your yeah. parents never went anywhere. I know, and I, and I and so, but I remember at a young age, she had boundaries, mm-hmm. and I remember being like, "Well, this is not going to go well." Do you Fuck not me. think you have some serious boundaries, Lan? I'm just crazy. Yeah, yeah, and, and uh, some of that crazy includes some serious boundaries, where you're like, "I will not be doing that." Well, I don't. And I'm, sometimes I'm, I'm, the I'm, boundaries I'm, are unconscious. What I name one of my boundaries. Um. Um, the ritual that you have to do before you get on a plane. Yeah, that's different. Oh, is that different? Is that? Yeah, isn't that called that drinking? No, well, um, that's a little part of it. Sometimes <laughs> when I need an answer to a question, you tell me I'm overwhelming you and you can't talk about it. No, look, you were overwhelming me today because <laughs> I was like, "Hey, what you? What are you doing?" You're like, "I'm coming home. I got this. I got this. Can I get you to do this? Can I get this? And then tomorrow we're going this." And I was like, "Hold on. Uh, oh, hold on. I have a boundary. No, I'm just. Oh, hold on. You can't going, talk about like, it anymore. It's I'm, a boundary." I'm going like, oh, this is supposed to be my day off. On the boundary. Maybe. Yeah, I don't, yeah. Go um, ahead. You said something that sort of made me reflect the the idea that the two of you are pretty dynamic, sort of, mm-hmm. you know, big personalities. Whereas in our house, um, it's not like that as much. Kathy's, um, she certainly has a large voice and everything. Yeah. But in a much more... Yeah. Discreet, quiet. She's way. more subtle as a personality. M- much more subtle and almost sometimes overly passive. But, w- and that's the issue is when I see that, then I start to get annoyed and I compensate. Mm. So then I go from the fu- normal level of fire hose to an extreme level of fire hose because I'm compensating for what I think she should be adding. Right. I didn't have, I didn't have you as a parent. Like I, no, I, it's funny. I when you're saying that, I go, I was not a donate. I've said this on stage, but I'm not, I'm not wasn't a donate my time parent. I mm-hmm. wasn't much of a get involved parent. I think that I think I don't know why you're saying that because Stephen and Kathy is, is Stephen specifically is a very get involved parent, a very a donate your time parent. Like mm-hmm. he is, like top. Probably, probably, actually, probably the most involved parent of all of us, and Kathy, the, together, the two of them. Well, yeah. when yeah. the kids were in elementary, yeah, school. yeah, yeah. but still, school, but yeah. and but that energy doesn't disappear. <laughs> right. That energy is still there. <laughs> well said. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. And uh, you, you are, you are a very dynamic, loud personality in your household. You may not be as dynamic as, or as loud, maybe as dynamic, but well, not as loud as. I'm just Bert. loud. Nobody. Is. But, but. You you are of yeah. the two of you. You definitely are just like me and Bert. So they live with one of us, and then Kathy, who is you know much quieter, but she's definitely a hundred and ten percent present and plugged in. She's not unplugged. And she's just Lily subtle. has taken on more of that persona, mm-hmm. whereas Max is definitely a lot more out there, like me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when he feels comfortable, mm-hmm. like um, when he's not, he just is more like Kathy. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like she definitely keeps it toned down mm-hmm. because that big personality thing she looks at and is like, ooh. Lily like does? That. Yeah. I don't think, she, I think it, uh, I think inside she rolls her eyes a lot. Oh. <laughs> I know outside she does. Right. But I think there's a lot of that, like, uh, so loud. Right. So loud, so much energy. Tone right. it down. Right, right. I think, and she's probably right. Um, I definitely don't do it around like, lot of her friends mm-hmm. um well right or wrong i think i don't know i think it's just different people are i don't want to change who i am for for you know i don't want to change who i am i do try and temper who i am from time to time yeah when when it's appropriate but i um, do that a lot but i <laughs> all the time right but i think it's important to, to, to read the room and see who you need to be in the context of the room when she has friends over or whatever but at the same time, you have to be who you are. I mean, yeah. not being someone else teaches them the wrong thing too. So, you know. I think I think it's, I mean, we've talked about this, but it's complicated because I am who I am in the room. Mm-hmm. And then if I go outside and someone recognizes me, 
I think that I think it grosses them out. They see me like, "What's up, brother?" You know, like, and and they just and well, I don't, I don't think they're old enough or mature enough to understand why you do that because you do that because you're a gracious person and you're very gracious to people who recognize you because to be honest, that's who pays our rent is your fans. It's not, it's not, and you do it genuinely because you are genuinely grateful. Yeah. And I think as they mature, they'll yeah. understand that. I think mm-hmm. at this age, also remember teenagers, male or female are completely self-centered and yeah. self-focused and all about themselves. It's all about how does this affect me? What does this look like for me? How does this make me look? How does this reflect on me? They're totally self-centered. So if you're taking away from them something they thought should be theirs, no matter the circumstance, mm-hmm. they're like, well, f- screw that. You know how they say that hackers can grab the camera on your computer and just turn it on whenever? Hmm. I want that app for my daughter's phone. <laughs> how great would it be if you could just turn on your daughter's phone and all of a sudden you're just, just like, Spying on her? Oh, love it. You, you now remember? you're sounding like a psycho boyfriend. <laughs> Do you remember when she called me a psycho boyfriend? No, she never called you a psycho boyfriend. You called yourself one to her. No, <laughs> maybe no, but no. It was when it was when she was like, "Oh, I'm going to dot dot dots, and then we're going to go to dot dot dots." And I was like, "Okay, cool." And then I went on her life three hundred and sixty, and I tracked her. Oh, oh, okay, maybe then. And I was like, and I was like, "So what were you doing at the church?" She was like, "What are you talking about?" I was like, "Praying." You were at the church for like two hours. She said, no, I wasn't. And I was like, "Yeah, you were." She said, "I was not." And I, she goes. <gasps> You were tracking me? <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I do it all the time. So I breadcrumb your ass. <laughs> you know, uh, I talk to our daughters about you when you're not around. Uh, I wonder what those conversations sound oh, like. Oh, no. They're, I, I think you'd be very happy. Because I say things like, you know, the thing about dad tracking you is is just how much he loves you. He loves you so much. If anything happened to you, he would it would destroy him. Yeah. So, they need to understand that I, I am very similar to them. I love myself more than anyone, <laughs> and I, in order to get my, make sure that myself is happy, I need them to be safe and at home and in, in a secure <laughs> place, and then I can be happy. I can't be happy if something happened to them. I could never be happy again. Like I fucking, it's what's the crazy thing about having kids is, you invite this thing into your life that. It, it, it'll be the thing that you love more than anything you've ever imagined loving ever, ever, ever in your life. And then that thing is going to control you because you that love is so precious and so valuable that you go, I need to make sure that this, like no one, no one, no one explains that to you when you're about to have kids. No one says to you like, hey, just so you know, when she goes to the new school, she's going to put on a cool girl hat so she can make friends. And you're going to be freaking out because you're going to go, oh, I wouldn't stand out. You're the new kid. <laughs> like, don't stand out. Just, just. And then she's going to look at you and go, for real, how do I look? And you're going to want to tell her the truth and go, it's a little weird. You're a third grader in a fedora <laughs> going into fucking, you don't know any of these kids. Uh, you're like, oh, give her all. You go, you look amazing. And then the whole day you're having panic attacks going, is she making any fucking friends? It's the fedora, yeah, the fucking then, fedora. And then she comes out, and she, uh, she's still got the fedora on and I was out of school. And she's like, it was great. The hat was a good call. And I'm like, oh my God. Oh. And I go, I go, you understand. No one explains that when you get pregnant going, oh, just so you know, these little things are going to be fucking huge moments uh, in your life. Yeah. Aww. My, my, um, I have this memory of, um, Lily when, when she was, and she could just start walking. So this was, we were in an apartment and she was whining about something. And I remember this at the time as a, I felt like a strong parent, strong, made a good decision. She was whining, whatever it was, she just kind of started like tantruming and she just dropped down on her big fat diaper butt and just crying. I turned around and I didn't pay it any mind. And I was like, good for me because I looked at that little contorted face and I just wanted to go pick her up. Yeah, because I was so sad. And I was like, nope, don't do it. And I turn around. And now I think about that moment all the time when yeah. she's when she's treating me like shit. Yeah. And I'm no. like, I should have picked her up. God, God damn it. I had can the I, opportunity. Can I tell you? Can I tell you a moment that I think about all the fucking time when I knew I was I was fighting out of my weight class? Oh, it was when we were do, renovating the house. Mm-hmm. 
and they and she wasn't picking up her room and you were mad Mm -hmm. and you're like you need to go in there and really start a fire under their ass they're not doing anything and isla was oblivious she walked out of the room she's like i just tear it down i don't need whatever's in there tear it down (laughs) she's awful and i and i said georgia come on you got to do this is we start demolition tomorrow and she said dad sit on my bed how old was she when we did this oh this is so sweet how old was she so i can put frame of um, reference on oh i remember this why this was it shit i don't know it was like when do we renovate the house i don't remember honey if i knew off the top of my head i would tell you uh it was it was uh it was she this was, was probably, maybe like 2015 somewhere around there probably it's like it was i was I gonna got, say six years ago so yeah it was about six, she was probably 10 or 11 11 yeah and she sat me in her bed and she said i'm not picking up my stuff because i'm not ready to get rid of this room i said what do you mean she said this room has all my childhood memories everything i did as a child is in this room i had all my experiences as a child in this room and the second you tear this down my childhood goes away and i was like what the fuck i'm not ready to be a big girl and she goes i'm not ready to be a big girl not tomorrow not today i need I need one more day in this room, dad. Just give me one more day in this room. And then she started crying. And then she looked at me and saw that I was holding it back. And she goes, dad, daddy, it's okay. You can cry. Let it out. And I started crying with her. And I was like, fuck this. We're not fucking renovating this house. Fuck this. (laughs) Your mom's an asshole. It was her idea. We can't even afford it. I got fired from Travel Channel. (laughs) And I was cried. I cried in this bed with her. And we hugged each other. And I thought to myself, I walked out and I was like, I'm not, I'm not as emotionally deep as this child. I'm not as insightful as this child. Mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm not equipped to parent this child. <laughs> if she's having feelings like these at 11 and I, here I am fucking 42 years old, 40 years old going like, oh, I don't want to tear down my room either. Like, I, like I, I, and I was like, I'm fucking done. And then, and then now, but and now, what a blessing that is to have a child like that. And you know what? If she, that moment's in her DNA. That moment is in her psyche. That moment's there forever for her too. And she did that. She didn't do that with me. She did it with you. So that's the things that you have to really think. Those are there forever. So even if I get dismissed, I get rejected as a teenager, she's going to come back to that person. Yeah. She it, will. It, yeah, maybe. She will. She'll come back to a version of that person yeah, but, who's more I, mature. You know, there's, uh, yeah, I don't know. Because, you know, the thing is, the thing about kids, this is the way I thought about kids, it was written in a poem um, that we as parents are just vessels. We're supposed to get them from this shore to that shore. And then they get off the vessel and go on with their life. That's what they're supposed to do. Not Mm -hmm. that they never come back or they never get on the boat again and take a lap around, but that's our job. Our job is to get them from A to B. And there's pulling away from from us is part of them getting ready to get off the ship and get on the land and go on their own and make their own ship and have their own children. And it's healthy. We're just vessels. They don't belong to us, really. They belong to the world. They belong to themselves. You want them to belong to themselves. You want them to feel like they're their own person. Can somebody on the other shore pay for college? (laughs) (laughs) They don't get off the boat till college is over. (laughs) But I think it's hard to keep that in mind. We're just privileged to be the people who get to take these kids from one shore to the next. It's a privilege. Even in the hard times, the hard times are what carves the good deep cavern that fills with joy. And if you don't have those hard times, you don't have a real relationship. It's not enough. If she didn't feel comfortable enough with you guys to treat you that way, then she didn't, wouldn't love you because she wouldn't trust you. I didn't, Hmm. to be honest, I didn't trust my dad to be able to handle me. So I had a facade of everything's great, everything's great. And then I did what I wanted behind his back because I did I couldn't trust him to take care of himself, to be okay. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. And he's proven me right my whole life. Every time I transition to another phase, he has a hard time and I have to take care of him. So that they're able to let it all hang out with you, the good, the bad, and the ugly. 
I think is a testament to how much they trust you and believe that you're never going away. Because part of me, everybody left. Everybody right, right. left. So I couldn't risk my dad leaving, even though obviously now, as a 51-year-old girl, I, I know my dad would never have gone anywhere. Yeah. But the way that I was raised, everybody left. My dad left when I was seven, not because he wanted to, because the judge said, you can't have her. So, but at the end of the day, when you're seven, you go, well, he left. Where'd he go? Right. And then, you know, oh, he leaves every Sunday. He leaves me on my mom's doorstep every Sunday. He's left me again. So I just spent my whole childhood being left by a man who didn't want to leave me. But at the end of the day, it still was being left. So I couldn't really trust that he wasn't going to leave. When we got married, we wouldn't argue. I wouldn't argue because I didn't know how to argue because I knew that he might leave. So I can't really tell you everything that's going on because I don't trust you. And that came well, from she, my she childhood. How to fix that, huh? <laughs> we, he helped me fix that oh, one. Mealy mouth, chatty Kathy over here. Uh, well, you helped me fix that because you were the first thing when I went, he's not going to leave. Like, I really believe this one's not right. leaving. Right. Like, how can he live without me? I mean, really, where's he going? <laughs> but I had in my psyche and my subconscious part of my brain, I didn't really understand that. So I think that it is a testament to how much they do love you mm -hmm. and trust that you're not going anywhere, that they can be. Do you remember when they were, I know you remember this, they would come home from preschool and be assholes, like complete tantrum, asshole, mean. I would just throw shit for an hour because they'd spent the whole day in preschool keeping it together. The, it's the same thing in the brain that happens in preschool happens in their brains in high school. The same kind of hmm. pairing of neurons is, is really intense what their development that's going on, the physical development of their brain in toddler years and in teen years. Yeah. So they spend all this time being cool and hip with their friends and appropriate and and acquiescing and accommodating and they get home and they don't have to do that. They can just let it be. And it's, uh, it's exactly like it was when they were toddlers. So, you know, I would come home throwing shit all day long and you're like, what has happened? Yeah. It's just, she's got to get it out. So I think the same thing happens. It just looks very different. And we expect them because they can walk and talk and put three sentences together and make sense. We expect them to have the emotional maturity that they're just not capable of. Just like when they were toddler, they weren't capable of it then. Yeah. Your mother told me that. She was like, whatever is going on behaviorally and with boundaries in toddler repeats itself because the brain development repeats itself. So whatever problems you're having with your toddler, you will have again with your teenager. Yeah. Um, and it's been pretty true. Yeah. What were you smirking about? Yeah, I just, my brain goes to the fucking... My wife talks too much. No, your no, brain no, no, no. My brain just thinks of the fucking <laughs> joke. Bizarre. It's, it's like I have no fucking attention span for what only whatever anybody else says. But you. And, yeah, but no, but it's it's not anybody else says. I, I literally was like, I, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have built them bedrooms. I should have made them live in the living room with me. Oh my god! Because like I'm sitting what are there they, going, dogs? I know, but no, but I, but I, I get bummed when they go to their bedrooms, and I'm the one that built those bedrooms. I'm like, I'm the one that was like, you guys. She have really big bedrooms so you can hang out there. And I'm like, why the fuck did I do that? I should have made them shoeboxes <laughs> so that they were like. So he drove them out. Yeah. It's weird. This house has been tough for me to wrap my head around because um, Lacey was asking me today. She was like, are you feeling comfortable in it yet? And I said, I do in this, in the podcast studio and gym. I feel very comfortable back here. I said, not there yet because I go there. I don't know. Because everyone's in different rooms. Like today, you're in a room reading. Isla, George is gone. Isla's in her bedroom. And then I'm like, oh, I guess I'll go lay down. Like, <laughs> what am I going to do? Like, like this morning, it was it was really good. I woke up and I organized my blood pressure medicine. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, I was like, Leanne was gone. Georgia was asleep. Isla was asleep. I was like, I'll just organize my blood pressure medicine. But like, there's a real... There is a, there's got to be a scientific solution to this of like the proper size house for a family, <laughs> meaning to keep you guys close. Brian Regan told me that, and I, I, I don't know if I ever share, share it with you, Stephen, but when we lived in our old house, um, 
I said to Brian, came in, he and you know people didn't mean this disrespectfully. They just would say it. They're like, oh, I, th- I thought this house was so much bigger because I put it on Instagram so much. People just assumed it was a big house. And then when you got in it, you're like, oh, this is a very small house. <laughs> like, this is a lot smaller than I anticipated. And, like, you walk out of the back door and you're almost in the pool. Yeah. And so, and then the man cave is only, like, 10 steps. Yeah. And so, um, and I said, yeah, yeah, we're, 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 uh, we're buying a bigger house. Um, and he goes, I wouldn't do that. I said, what do you mean? He goes, this house is great. He goes, this is the perfect size house. I said, what? And he goes, he's just, I can get a bigger house. Everyone just goes off in their bedrooms. And, like, no one hangs out. But he's like, you, this feels like a house. And today I was like. I was like, I'm fucking taking a shower and I'm trying to measure my body to see if I lose any weight tomorrow. Because if I don't, this fucking diet's over. And so, uh, and so, how are you gonna lose so, weight in one day? We'll, we'll see. It's so, a five day cleanse. Oh, so I said, Leanne, 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 and she's like, I'm up here. I'm like, what? She's like, I'm reading. I go, what? I'm reading. <laughs> and it's like, and then I'm like. I'm like, man, and all, I, I literally was like angry. I got in bed because I got in bed because there was nothing to do. It was like, I was going to sleep. And I was like, I was like, man, in our old house, I would, I'd bump into her all the time. Like, I'd be like, I'd walk in and she'd be in the kitchen. I'd be like, what's up? And then I'd go in the living room and I'd be like, hey, babe, what are we doing tonight? Like, it was like, no one had to raise their voice. No one ever, ever yelled for anyone. You just said, Georgia. It's like, what? I mean, you were like up each other's asses. And I, and I, and you missed that. Uh, I do. I don't. The thing that sucked about that house was like having people over. All of a sudden, like everyone was up each other's asses. Yeah, yeah. And so it was nice. Like when we had people over last night, it was nice that I felt like there could be actually two separate groups of people. Yeah. Doing, and there were like three or four, you know. And I was like, that's nice. That's really nice. You'll and get used to I'll it. I'll get used you to know, it. The thing is, it's. It's better. George's room was so small at that other house. She she was like living in a shoebox. We're 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 in that place too, though. Like our house isn't that big, and as soon as we got in there, it, the kids all of a sudden to their rooms. He had his, she had hers. Because remember, at the old house, yeah, the, the old yeah. house they, they were sharing, room. which is one of the main reasons we needed to separate, yeah. right? And so, well, yeah, we don't see them. Yeah, like we have a living. We got a living room. We put a big TV. And, Kathy's like, it'll bring everybody out. Well, nobody comes out and watches yeah. TV. I want to hangs out. It's the wonder, nature of the biz. It's their yeah. age. It's their I, I age. remember Adam Carolla um, saying one time, like something about, he was saying that you, you shouldn't have more than, um, you shouldn't have kids if you live in an apartment. And I love. Oh, that's stupid. Well, no, I, I'm not citing him. I, I, maybe I'm misquoting him too. But I remember listening to that. We were listening to Adam Carolla's show in on Trip Flip. We were in the, van driving like six hours mm-hmm. and we listened to corolla or rogan and uh he had said something about you know if you have kids it's, you shouldn't live in an apartment or maybe if you have more than one kid or more two kids or whatever and i was like and at the time we had two kids when we were living in the apartment i had the hardest time moving out of that apartment i love that fucking apartment well you do have a hard time with change you do have a hard time with moving and with change mm. you always have you don't like change. And maybe that's part of what's going on with your teenage daughter. Change. She'll need me again. She will need you. She needs no, you I'm now. I'm saying this like an evil villain. No, she needs <laughs> you now. Need but again. here's a question. Do you think that your parents thought about this as much as you do? No. 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 no I, don't think my, I mean this very respectfully. I didn't understand that my dad was a person until I was 21. Like, I didn't understand he was a person. I thought he was just a dude who had no wants, no needs, no passions. He just worked. What do you mean? You just just, it's a person? Yeah, like a person. Like that, that like. Wow, you kind of objectified your dad? No, no, I mean. No, no, He's just I, I, an I, object? This just a figurehead? No, no. Be coached all your ball games. No, but I, no, but. He always said the right thing. He always did the right thing. Oh, you didn't see that he was flawed, meaning that he right. he was always like at a hero stature. Like I knew I knew I was okay. fucked up, I and I knew I had weird thoughts, and I knew I was a bizarre person, Got and it. I knew I wasn't perfect. I knew that I was like that. I was like, this is going to be a little bit of a fucking rough road for me. 
Because the things I thought, the, the ways I felt, and the things I did were always fucking south of normal. Yeah. And I and I and I was like, I wish it could be like my dad. He goes out n- now. It's like, how did I not fucking see this? He goes out and he runs ten miles every night. And then I'm like, now I, I realize he was talking about. I was like, I, I, these are things I was like, I was like, he's great. He has tuna fish and a tomato for lunch, and he has a piece of chicken for dinner. And he runs ten miles at night. 10 miles in the morning i was like this this guy's a fucking he's a fucking savage and then he goes out he works all day coaches my baseball i didn't realize that was building up to like a fucking midlife crisis for him mm. like that, that and then all of a sudden he was going to be like you know have his problems and and figure things out and then and then even when he first started eating marijuana i had a really hard time compartmentalizing that like i didn't see him as a human like yeah. i saw him as as my dad like a hero a like hero a, I, I, yeah. a hero really yeah. And if I had problems with him, I was terrified of him. I was ter- I never I never said no to that guy. If he said yeah, I mean to this day I still don't say no. I mean I, I don't. Like I still look at him as like a hero. And my mom same way, my mom was just like I don't know, I just I looked at my parents differently and I think I wanted the girls to look at me like that, but mm. I made them look at me like a regular person. Uh, right. I I agree. Like I I mean I didn't have the same view of my parents that you did of your dad, but yeah. um, I, I definitely wanted and expected a little bit more of the way I looked up to them. Yeah, I expected that I would get that. I thought mm-hmm. I'd get that a lot longer. But you're right. I mean, I, I like my dad but, would come to my baseball games when I was in high school, and it made me so proud that he like came to my games, mm-hmm. and that that like, and I'd go up to him and I'd it, I, his approval. His approval was so important to me mm-hmm. that if he said, don't get a fake ID, I didn't get a fake ID. If he said, don't drink and drive, I didn't drink and drive. Mm-hmm. Now, I, granted, I, I did drink and drive a couple times growing up, but it, it, mostly like there were times, there were distinct times that I drank and I had my car there and I knew I was too drunk to drive and I called him and he picked me up and and we didn't speak at all. He brought a a fucking bucket and a towel <laughs> and we drove silently on 275 back to our house i didn't never talked about it ever but like my but that was another thing is like i didn't even know my dad had emotions like i knew like he started getting mad at me a lot when i was in college like mad at me that was when i knew he had emotions but like he'd be proud of me and i just never wanted to let him down and then and then our our problems started when i was in my freshman year in college and it was it was me. It was my fucking fault. It was all my fault, you know. Well, never th- nothing's well, ever on. all one person's I mean, fault. Devil's advocate. Not that that's what this is supposed to be about, but like by that rationale, Georgia goes to college her freshman year. Everything's her fault. It, I don't know that that's true, right? In other words, you're saying it was all your fault, but in, oh, in, it was. In, well, but but was it? Was it just? No, more- no, it was. It was. It was hardcore. And it was, it, and can I tell you, it's shit she's doing to me. She doesn't realize it's her fault. Like, like little things, like, like uh, I grew my hair out freshman year, like to my shoulders. Okay. And, what, what, what are you doing? What's wrong with that? Okay. Well, I'm, let me tell the story. Okay. okay. I grew my hair out freshman year uh, to my shoulders. And, um, and I came back to Tampa for summer uh, after freshman year. And I got a job, and I got a job working at CDBs. And this, this is a very, my, my big group of guys that my dad knew very well. And my dad always treated everyone with respect. Like, he's, he's always been like, you know, uh, it, 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 he, 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 he's never seen someone beneath, he never feels, he's never represented that someone's ever been beneath him. Mm-hmm. So even if in this situation, the manager at CDBs told me, I couldn't have long hair. I needed to cut my hair. It looked gross. And I said, I'm not cutting my hair. And then he reached out to my dad. And I, and I don't mean this disrespectfully, but he was like, you know, Bert needs to cut his hair. I, 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 would, I would assume my dad would be like, hey, listen, he's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a summer job. It's, it's a, it's a, he's a server. And he's not going to cut his hair. It's, it's his fucking hair. It's, he's in college. Let him fucking be the women all have long hairs why can't a boy have that was my argument my dad just was like cut your fucking hair 
And I was like, what? And he goes, hey, listen, he's a good man. He works hard. You cut your hair. He asks you to cut your hair. You cut your fucking hair. And in my head, I was like, what the fuck are you talking so about? So now, and that is you explaining why it was your fault. It's my fault because I, sh- I, I then, I made, I said stupid things. Like I was like, I was like, I was like, I'm not letting, I'm not having one man tell me to cut my hair to my dad. And my dad was like, hold on. I'm your father. I pay for everything. And you're going to cut your fucking hair. And I was like, nope. And he was like, eh, granted, he did ask me to cut my hair in college, high school. And I got a crew cut. And he said, I look like a fucking idiot. And I was like, okay, I guess I'm never let's do that again. So I was like this big thing, but I, I fought back with him. And, uh, and, and, and then I bought Abigail that same that same time and abigail tore up his thing and i was i was doing things to create problems abigail's a dog a dog yeah no i bought a russian bride <laughs> abigail and brought her over and she's just chewing up things <laughs> she was chewing up things and so and so my 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 hiccup with my dad start in that lasted throughout russia throughout europe throughout when i was backpacking through europe i mean it la- i mean it lasted i want to say it, it was I don't know. It was, it was lasted for a while. It was all me. I, 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 I was pushing back, you know? And I think that's what George is doing sometimes. It's like, but if is that, it's I mean, I'm trying to play devil's advocate here for a second. Not because not to try to take the culpability off you, yeah. but like we're trying to say here that, okay, it's, it's partially us as parents. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. I I'm saying it's always me. Like I'm saying, it's always me. <laughs> like I'm, I, I think I'm always the one that causes problems. That's what's I fucked see. up about I me. See. That's what is I go, yeah, that was me. Even when I had problems with my dad, that wasn't my dad doing anything. That was me. And that, but now it's me again doing stuff where I go, I go, maybe it's just me. I wouldn't <laughs> well, want to be my I'm, kid. I mean, that's, would you want to be my kid? Uh, I would. It would be hard. That's a long, some of it. Sometimes it would be fun. Answer. Okay. Sometimes it would be really fun. Uh, but I, I. I it Wait, would I would love to be your fucking kid. I know. I'm an amazing kid. Wait, hold on. <laughs> would you want would you want to be Kathy's kid? Uh, Kathy's an amazing Yeah, mom. Kathy's pretty good. Yeah, I want to be one of Kathy's kids. Yeah, exactly. I'm not certain I'd be want to be I want to be my kid or your kid. <laughs> would you want to be my kid? I, I, I think it would be hard to be my kid. Um, um to be your kid. Yeah, I mean I think it would be hard, but I don't I mean it would definitely be it would definitely be fun, um, but I. It's not. They don't even, I don't think they think it's fun. No, they probably don't. No, I, I mean, think they. Go, I mean, I think they probably do in many ways, but not in the way that maybe we're thinking about. I I guess what I I I guess I'm I'm trying to point the finger at myself, and I know that's what you're doing, but you're yeah, doing it, doing. but you're doing it as like, oh, it's always my fault because I'm difficult. You you yes, but. Uh, thinking as parents now not thinking as just the individual who may be at fault mm-hmm. we're basically saying look as parents which when we were children our parents probably didn't to your point didn't go through this this exercise of self-reflection no. and to try to do better they just did and and it came out how it came out yeah. we came out how we came out we came out pretty resilient as a generation we're a pretty resilient generation and i think our parents were much more matter of fact about parenting there was not a lot of emotion like we have as parents where i know i have considered my kids feelings before doling out a punishment where i just got the punishment you know your feelings the you fucked up here's the punishment yeah where i go you fucked up here's the punishment but i feel really bad about it sounds like you were always told you were wrong Uh, yeah right yeah, it's why I don't talk about politics ever, about anything, like anything, yeah. anything. I don't talk about vaccines or nothing. I don't talk about anything because I was always wrong. But I was cool with being wrong. So it turned, I think it turned me into a very empathetic person. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm fucked I, up. No, I think I'm I, really fucked empathy up. Empathy is the number one thing I think of when I think of Actually, right? <laughs> That is number one. I go, you know what? The asshole. empathy just you flows from I, I, every I, part of us. <laughs> I think it's emotional intelligence more yeah. than I empathy. I, yes. I don't know. I'm not good with big words, but like I, I always think of myself. I, I, <laughs> I don't talk. I, I was always, I was always wrong. I was you are very wrong. sensitive as a person, and you are very good at seeing 
the other side if you're not completely emotional about your side. So if you are, if you can see something from the outside, then you are really, really good at empathy, at yeah. empathy, really good yeah. at it. But if you feel like you've been wronged in this equation somehow, the only thing you can see is your own emotion. I can, I can tell you when it happens how I'm, how it's gonna. I can, I can, I can. Uh, Would that be accurate? Yeah. 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 If it's not, if it doesn't involve you, you're like super objective so and reasonable and fall yes. on the side of people. If it involves who are like, me, I get so, I get my feelings hurt so quickly and so deeply that the only thing that you can hear is mm. your feelings when there may be someone else's feelings involved also. Tom told me that. Segura told me that. And he's like, yeah. I said, we're saying something. I forget what he was saying. He's like, yeah, you're the most sensitive person I know. You are very sensitive. I said, for real? Yeah. And he yeah. goes, oh, yeah. Yeah. And I was like, oh. You are, I am very sensitive. What you're the very fuck? sensitive and you're very fragile with your sensitivity. Yeah. So then once, if your daughter hurts your feelings, uh, you, you have a hard time seeing her side. You only see your hurt. What am I going to do for drugs or alcohol tonight? Did you just, you totally I'm, just I'm, I'm, not, I'm, exactly I'm uncomfortable with my feelings. I'm uncomfortable with my feelings. And I'm not sure how I'm going to alleviate them. I, and my stomach is fucking going. Well, I don't think you can drink on this cleanse, honey. I think I'm that's think, part I of think, the cleanse. I think Lacey said probably tequila. Lacey did. Lacey talked to me on her way out and said there's no booze on this cleanse, you know. I and I went, I know. Is a mistake. Are we partying tonight? I, I have no idea. I um, I so not. then. If our parents didn't think in depth about parenting the way that we do or feel about it the way we felt, and we ended up, I think, inarguably, we're in happy relationships. Mm -hmm. We're fully functioning, successful, forward-thinking human beings. Do you think that we will have the same in our kids? Do you think it's been a detriment that we think too much about their feelings, or do you think it gives them a leg up and gives them a little extra boost? I don't think I understood the question. Okay. Do you think it was positive or negative that we have more emotions about parenting? Oh, I think it's going to be negative. You do? Yeah. There's something to be said for, I don't think all, I think we, when I say we, I don't think as a, as a country, I think a lot of this country is not, is not, I think us LA parents, I think are a little too sensitive to mm -hmm. our kids. Mm -hmm. Um, that may be accurate, and I and I think and I and I say that because I'm sure there are people listening to this going, "Why the fuck do they care?" Tell, fucking, yeah, you have problems with your daughter. Like, who gives a fuck? Yeah, you know, I had problems with my dad. It's, it's normal. Like, there are a lot of people. Like, I remember there was a lot of. I remember saying to, well, your sister was horrible with your mom and dad, and they were cool with it. Uh, they weren't cool with it, but they're cool now. Wait, that's my one? whole point. Coffee. Cotty like stole a car when she was 14. She would sneak out on her window out of her window ledge and smoke cigarettes. And she was like drink. She was a lunatic and way worse than our kids. Way but worse. they're fine now. That's my whole point. Right? Um, yeah, I think I think I'm I, I know I'm overly sensitive to it because I, I I'm also I feel guilt about it because I've been on the road for so long. I've uh -huh. been on the road so much and I focused on my life more than anyone else's life. I focused on. It's very weird to follow a dream and, and you know and and have your your it's like i don't think a lot of americans or a lot of people listening are following their dreams mm -hmm. so then they're just busting their ass and they're getting shit done and they're paying bills and then when their kids act like assholes i don't think there's any guilt associated with like hey fuck you i work every day mm -hmm. that's how they talk and i'm sitting there going i feel bad I feel bad that I worked for Travel Channel. It was a fun job. You know, I feel bad that I worked for Travel Channel and I do two weeks gone, one week home, two weeks gone, one week home. And on those one weeks homes, I go to stand up. Yeah, but that's not entirely true. You don't paint an accurate picture of that entirely. When you're at home, you walk the girls to school, pick the girls up from no, yeah, school. Yeah, 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 you're right. You're right, you're right. Dinner, no, you're right, you're right. But, know, but it wasn't there is like a, you were gone. There is a guilt I have I about that. working. Yeah. Like a guilt because despite the fact that it, it pays our bills and everything, there's a guilt that I like I go, I'm back on the road Thursday. Well, it's collateral damage. You, it's not collateral damage, but that's the wrong term. Meaning that there's 
two sides to the coin. One side is you get to fulfill your dreams. The other side is you feel like you've missed out on all these moments. Yeah. Perhaps that someone like Stephen who works every day and but comes selfish. home every day. But Stephen's still, still doing it, following a dream. A of little course, bit. but he comes home like, every I mean, day. Yeah, yeah. He, he's at home. Yeah, I'm gone. His dream. I'm gone. Right. And I'm spending time in a bus. His dream involved commuting <laughs> to and from an office where your dream. That would fucking kill me. That would, worse than being on the road for a month straight or being in Serbia for three months straight, worse than that, without a fucking doubt, would be a fucking hour and a half, 45 minute commute every day to be done work and know that you could be home with your family. That would make me fucking crazy it's like one of the things where i where you talk about i have weird bout like i i go i i I know i would not be doing that i couldn't does it make you crazy i don't commute anymore no we don't go i mean we don't even go in the office so i just work at home yeah um but we don't travel at all anymore for business we don't travel for sales we don't travel for for marketing or all the things so like even the travel that i used to do is gone the commute is gone so i'm you know I'm always, I'm always around, which is, which is great. Um, I kind of feel like that was sort of a, a, a blessing in the past couple of years mm-hmm. to be able to just mm-hmm. kind of be home. Mm-hmm. Um, oh yeah. Pandemic was very nice for us traveling parents. Yeah. Us traveling, working parents. I mean like, and look, I, once again, I, I, I compartmentalize this because I, enjoyed like I, I it's it's very hard like i'd sit next to guys that were like i work for boeing or i work i'm a i'm a say i'm medical sales and i talk, talk to them all the time on planes and they were working and like they're making good money and they were they're happy they're you know taking care of their family but, yeah but they're taking care of their family it's like that i was always my travel was always like yeah i'm going I, mean, it, I guess it's work but it's also my dream so like well you different. know some people's dream is to take good care of their family you know Mm. that's very blue collar dream yeah to take care of your family to pay well, it's, I, it's, it makes me feel, feel i feel the pride in it yeah sure it gives makes you feel pride and and I, my dream is to definitely take your i have that i must share that dream with them but like even still like like the, if your commute was like uh on a jet ski i'd be like <laughs> i'd be like that's okay i don't mind a, j- a commute on a jet ski okay i have a couple questions what is one thing that you think as a dad, you do really well. Ooh, drink on airplanes. <laughs> That's not as a dad. No, I do that as a dad all with the time. your daughter. I mean, he's still a dad when he's drinking on an yeah. airplane. I get, it, I get. It. Yeah. Um, you go. Uh, I've only done two things with both my daughters that I did very well. Was well, only two. Two things. Well, I mean, that I can think of. Okay. I mean, I'm sure there's more. Um, teach them how to swim and ride bikes. I fucking murdered that shit. Yeah, you did. I murdered that shit. That's like one thing I'm really proud of. What is... do you think you do right now that's really good? What are you really good at right now? I actually don't do anything right now. Nothing? No. Um, I uh, I don't, yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm, I, I, it's a very hard answer for me, to, question for me to answer because this year I have been gone um, since April. I've been gone uh seven or six months i've been gone six months Mm -hmm. so it's april so it's may june july august september october november out of eight seven seven months i've been gone six of months so i i I have a very hard time answering that okay i don't know if i'm doing anything good i'm being serious like i don't mean it shitty like um provide like provide money like I'm I'm, I'm 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 really i'm not even joking i'm trying to think of something i do good what about I, listening I, i'm a really bad listener you think so yeah i'm not i yeah i'm, I'm obviously anyone listens anyone listens to my podcast knows i don't listen at all i don't listen to you you have I, 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 like i'm even in this podcast i'm i'm a really bad listener um i make good sandwiches you do make good sandwiches i make good sandwiches that's good yeah steven what that's do you important. think you do this really good is it dad? Um, <clears throat> so I'm good. Like, I know I, I'm good when, like, the kids have a project, whether it's, Ooh. you know, Lily's got something for Girl Scouts or Max has got something for some, science or Lily wants to go and take up this hobby or learn about acting or whatever it is. Like, I'm good at 
digging in and making a project plan and going, okay, here's how we start. Here's what we do. Here are the steps. Here's how we sort of get these different pieces done and sort of try to map out a path to success. So, and, and that, you know, I think that was true of when it was homework, like when, you know, if it's like writing an essay that just feels like it's a mountain or it's building that stupid little cell that they had to build both mm -hmm. kids in elementary school or, mm -hmm. you know, the styrofoam cell, yep. remember, like, you know, stuff like that. Like I'm, I'm good at like sort of kind of coaching the project plan. Uh-huh. Um, uh, I'm good at feeding them. Like, <laughs> um, like cooking? Yeah. Like trying to come up with like, okay, what is, how do we all like, just like, cause food is so important to me mm -hmm. um, that uh, I think I'm, I'm, it's hard to satisfy all palates and, mm -hmm. you know, wants and restrictions. But uh, I feel like I'm pretty good at trying to figure out like, how do we all just like enjoy? I think the I would have been better answering the question, what are you bad at? Uh, that was my next question. Oh. My next question was not phrased that way, but it was, what do you think you could improve? Okay, as a what, dad? so what am I bad at? Uh, <laughs> teaching my kids anything. Like I driving, I've already, I've like, but you just said you're good at teaching them how to ride a bike and swim. Well, I killed those. But driving, I was a nightmare. Oh, driving, you were a nightmare. I was really bad. You were really not good. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, l listening, like, if I'm really bad if some if someone is having an emotion mm -hmm. or if, if someone's feelings were hurt or if someone's, uh, I, I'm, I have, take two angles. I either transition it into how that makes me feel uh -huh. and then I overwhelm them with my feelings. Yes. Or I discount them entirely as if this is a make-believe thing. Wow. You are so incredibly self-aware. That is absolutely right. Yeah. But I don't know. But then because you know that, when it's in the moment, is it hard for you to adjust out of the, one of those places? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's really hard. Yeah. Because that is what happens when someone's having an emotion. You either make it about yourself or you disregard it. But you won't allow us to make it about ourselves or disregard your emotion. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so fascinating that you're so self-aware that you can see that, Bert. Yeah. I'm with, I think that's, I mean, the one thing comedy gives you is a very hyper awareness of who you are and what you're doing and, mm. and like how you are interacting with things. That it's, it's very introspective. So then what would you improve about that? Maybe to, to not take it, not make it about yourself. You know, it's so funny. I just it. I disconnect. I, like I. Like no, but I was, how would you improve that? I don't know. I you mean, like in the moment. How yeah, would you in the moment. That? How yeah, would you? Improve I don't know. It? I've already thought. I got a little panic as we were t telling, and I was like, I was like, I was, I was like, I was really bad at teaching George how to drive, and I was like, oh, I'm never, I'm not getting, I'm, I, I, I won't get on on a jet ski with Isla. Yeah. Well, I won't. I won't get on a jet ski with her. I know. Because she almost killed me, and so I'm not getting in a car with her. I'm not. I'm not gonna. I like, and then, and then I just go, why I, I give up to protect everybody. Cause I go, cause if, if, if I fucking go. Giving up is never the answer as a parent. You're just not child, allowed to give up. Child, you can't give up. This child one time compromised her vision of the road for speed. Do you remember that? When she was in that ATV, she, for her, what was more important was going fast. So she slid so she couldn't see. So she could press the pedal. <laughs> She compromised she seeing where she was going in fifth grade. But no, but that, but so... that brain, that brain. That's why, she, like, she's like, I know what car I want. I go, you're not getting that car. You're not getting that car <laughs> because you need a tank, woman. You are going to hit a lot of things at a very high speed. I don't think she will. I don't think she will. I you don't didn't think see you. In the fucking golf cart. I heard about the golf cart, and that's part of that is because she gets goofy and nervous around you guys. Oh yeah, and she is insecure, and so she. Stephen, goofs. what could you approve upon? Yes. What, what? I'm about to piss my pants. Oh. Um, um, I think patience. Ooh, I, me too. My, <laughs> you're like, I want that Put one. me on that one. I want Put that, that on I want my that list. One too. Um, uh, I am, especially over the past, I would say, five years, become a lot better at listening and thinking how to 
respond with with people, especially related to work and and the world. Um, but with the family, like even with Kathy, I have to really focus and like be like you know take steps to be patient and um uh, allow allow many chances of like I just want to jump in there and be like no stop that's not how you talk to her that's not how you talk to your sister that's not how you talk to your mother that's not how you talk to me shut up this is this is the way you behave yep like stop it yep right like but and sometimes that just happens too quickly or sometimes that happens after I lose patience, you know, after I've, I've really done a good job with patience and then that just comes out. Right. But um, or some, you know, less nice version of that. Uh, so patience is definitely one of them. I probably could also like I'm tr- I could probably do better with trying to find other ways to connect, especially as it relates to we're talking about daughters. Right. Like I'm, you know. I mean, but with Max too, like Max is way more into video games than I ever was or am. Like I could, you know, trying to find ways to connect. So there is more to talk about. Mm-hmm. So there is like, you had that golf moment. You're like, brilliant. You are yeah. an athlete. She's an athlete. Great. Like finding more of those things. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's, you know, the time to sort of turn off work, turn off stress and then focus on, okay, what can I do with them for them? Um, you know, what could your wife do to help you Ooh, blow with jobs, your daughter? Blow jobs, blow jobs would, help blow you jobs with would your... calm me down, <laughs> make such, me a little more easy to manage. Ass. I listen better with blow jobs. Blow you, jobs, you actually don't, <laughs> you only listen really good right before. So, promise me blow jobs <laughs> every evening, and I'll be a good guy throughout the day. <laughs> I don't think it works like that. Um, and what could your wives do to help you with where your daughter? Way, if he gets concerned. to jump on top of patience, I get to jump on on on. Yeah, on yeah. Blow jobs, I, yeah. You know, I want to check. <laughs> check. You'll also say blowjobs helps. <laughs> I mean, if that's what's on the menu. Well, uh, Kathy and I feel really great about that. <laughs> I want. I'll tell you what. I, I this is a feeling I've had a bunch. I wish you were just on my team a lot. Like I don't. I don't want you to ever be on their team. I want you to just be on my team. But what if I don't agree with your team? Well, I, if your team says our daughter's soul is filled with blackness, I'm not going to go, yep, you're right. <laughs> I'm on your team. What happens if I don't think your team's the right team? Oh, fuck. My, my point is like, sometimes like I'll be saying something and you'll go, but that's good, right? And I'll be like, okay, but that, that's not what I'm, I'm it, it, I mean, it's like, it's, you know, it's, one of the things you can't argue with is how someone feels, correct? And so yeah. I think a lot of what we deal with with our daughters is how things are making us feel. Sometimes you want to negotiate or broker a peace treaty when only one of us has our feelings hurt and the other one did it and you're going like, and I'm going like, hey, I understand that you think this is over, but she like no one knows that i feel this way yet like so i think well, that's it, yes i so i understand what you it, mean is it that she could do a better job she leanne could do a better job of just being interpreting like interpreting sort oh, of what you're going through for them i would love uh, yeah i would love for leanne to be like my spokesman so i didn't have to advocate for myself yeah i get that okay i, I get that because and I don't know that I would have put it the same way or, or that it's exactly the same, but I, I, I don't know for sure, but I've never really heard a lot of explaining to Lily or explaining to, I think she does some, some degree with Lily, but with both of them to sort of say, hold on, you guys have to understand where your father's coming from. Right. I uh, explained yeah, yeah, to yeah. him. Yeah. I explained to your father where you're coming from. I told him to stop fire hosing. I told him to stop this. I'm con- I mean, and they know they hear it. Like Kathy is right out there going, is it right? Yeah. Shutting me down so that I don't make it worse. Right. right. Hey, your father flew in uh, on, on, on a, on an early flight. So we could get here to be with you guys. And, and dot, dot, dot happened. 
And you got to understand, your dad's got a lot on his plate. He's got this. He's got that. He's got a. He doesn't have any free time. Like I like I, I sometimes sometimes I feel like, and I and I wouldn't trade this for the world. Sometimes I feel like no one knows how much I'm doing, mm-hmm. and and I go, I, I would I think it would benefit a lot of people to like know what's on my plate Mm -hmm. so they have perspective yeah because i go i go i i understand that i'm maybe i'm flying off the handle or i'm I'm becoming emotional about something Mm -hmm. but like like i I only have like you know 17 hours with you guys right and i I flew in here to spend time with you guys i'm trying to cram it into 17 hours yeah nine of which are going to be spending in an editing editing bay Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. uh we're gonna have a screening we got an editing bay and then i'm out and so in this in this the four hour window you that your dad's like trying to make time for, like maybe go like hey maybe I can maybe I'm maybe I'm not the most important part of this and maybe let me let me jump into his life so so that he can go back out to work and and push it just as hard and know that he's not fucking up totally. Mm-hmm. But it's like that four hour window seems to be the time when I start fucking it up around here. Like when you know when I got everything going on and then I, I'm here and then something someone says something and some someone hurts someone and then I, I I agree I'm not asking for like a scene out of Father Knows Best where, yeah <laughs> where I come home and it's the fifties and oh Dad had a hard day at work it's not that yeah, at yeah, all yeah, yeah. but I don't know that with everything they have going on in their lives which I want them to have mm-hmm. that they stop down for a minute because again as you said they're very self centered they're teens so if you're asked back to the question. What could Kathy do mm-hmm. that might help is help give them perspective, right? Help illuminate them as to what, um, what, you know, what is it I'm stressed about? What is it that, that is difficult for me? Like give them insight because when they get on her, they're not treating her fa- fairly. I'm like, hold on, yeah. let's think about everything your mother does. And the list is long mm-hmm. for you all mm-hmm. and how and why and right. And they oh, go, they're very, know. they're very empathetic to Leanne and Leanne's struggle. And I, I wonder if this goes back to what you said earlier about the way men are viewed by people today, but they are very empathetic to how hard well, Leanne works, what Leanne does for this family, what like it's, it's in their face. They see it. Leanne's up. She's got nine workers. She's doing this. And then, fucking doing a podcast they're they're hyper aware and it's to the point where i get texts from when i'm on the road you need to call mom she's having a rough day and i'll no one does that for dad no one does because no one sees your rough day yeah my, my rough, rough day is in, not here my, dad's that just makes partying, total sense to dad's me dad's partying balls on a tour bus right i hear it but they don't and part of that is healthy they don't need to hear about your bad day all day long they don't they really need to hear about mine either but they see mine mine is in their house usually right. if yeah. i'm if I'm struggling with something, we're all here together. So I understand that. I think that makes perfectly good sense to me on a lot of levels. For one, you talk to wives about things that they couldn't possibly know. So like that's I, I one. Them, I, would love, I would love for them. I would love to share my calendar with them so mm-hmm. they can see what a day looks like for me. Yeah. And then they'd be like. Then they have oh. perspective. Then they, like, I mean, I, I just look at, I just look at what these look like these little red things all mm-hmm. over mm-hmm. and just for them to go like like and I, but i don't need it i don't need it i don't do this i don't i don't no, but what that. you're saying is i just in those moments where a fight starts i need that advocate yes, to be like that's, it's, that's it's right. that moment not it, it's that moment where they need they need a a coach to let them know and help them understand why the reaction from you or why the reaction from me may be the way it is or why our perspective, while they don't understand it, our perspective may not be wrong either. Right. It's not just that we're flying off the handle or we're right. fire hosing or it's us. It's that there's sort of generally the what is right is somewhere in the middle of both sort of polar views. Right. What, 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 uh, this may not be healthy, but it's, it may not be the right answer. But Tequila. It's, it would fuck. I wish. <laughs> sorry keep going um i um i almost just gave in right there the, <laughs> like would it be okay for say i have an, a, a thing that i'm standing up for yeah and you don't agree with yeah what you do is you go i don't agree with you 
and then they already don't agree with me and then I, it's me fighting everyone i feel like I've, I've fought all of you guys at times mm-hmm. where i go it's me against everyone always uh, always would it be okay for you to just agree with me to the girls it's over and then get me to understand that i was wrong and then I go apologize and go, I was I fucked up on that. That was my fault. Like, because my mom and dad were like unified front. Oh, yeah, yeah. They were like, if I said anything, they both, they were, they were a team. Mm. Me and you are on a team. You and the girls are a team. And I am on the other side. I, like, because you, you side with the girls and you'll go, hold on, hold on, hold on. And, I, and so sometimes I'll be like, I'll be like, I, I, I need a teammate in this. I feel like I'm alone. Well, Kathy I- will just go. Stephen, that's not helpful. And I go, okay. Yeah. Check it out. Right, right. You deal with it. Then. I see what you mean. But if I, I don't, if I'm not on her team, oh. if I disagree with her, it happened relatively recently. It happened to us the other day and I and got I, fucking and in trouble. It was a four day fight. It was, it was, ours was fucking. I don't even remember what you're talking uh, about. It was uh, uh, tactile issues. Oh, well, and, oh, and, and, and you, when and, you stopped me from talking. And I, no, I didn't stop you from talking. I just stop me pro- from talking. <laughs> you didn't stop me from talking. You just went, just stop. You just went stop our, as our, I was talking. Ours and then was continue to talk. Ours was Max's curfew. Oh, oh and, I heard and, about this fight, and we weren't on. We weren't not on the same front. page. Not on the same. We're not on the same page. That's no, the hard. I would no, love we're not to on the know. Same page, but why am I? Why am I vilified in the wrong one when I'm not on your page? But when. But when, but when it's when reversed, it, when it's reversed, you're just outward. Okay, hold on, Stephen, you're not being helpful. Mm. You just so you've just shut me down, and now it, yeah, you know, shutting. Yeah. Yeah, it's sometimes I, I think I, I think, and I don't know if this is when you are a sensitive, open minded, empathetic dude, yeah. and you and you co parent, and and you. I mean, I, sometimes I just wish I was a fucking meathead. And I was like, I was like, no, here's how it works. I, 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 I've actually probably said that before. You've done that but, once or twice. But like, but like, I, but the fact that we're not a team when it comes to that you try to negotiate and like. Well, and I broker. think what, well, the way that my brain works is that I try to find, I, I, I have a hard time proclaiming things I don't believe. So if you say, hey, the sky's purple today, and I'm supposed to go, yep, sky's purple. Dad says it's purple. And that's, then not, I, that's not, can the, you but, yeah, but that's not real. And then I, I'm well, not I'm going try- in. I'm duh. not going in going the sky's purple. Well, I'm a fucking lunatic hey, if I'm hey, doing hey, that. No shit. I'm okay. trying to give you an innocuous example of something that is meaningless, not an exact example. So if you say, hey, guys, sky's purple. And I go, well, sky's not really purple. So I can't go. Dad says, or I agree with dad, sky's purple. Then I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to do that. So that is something I have to figure out. How do I agree with you when I don't agree with you? And then go behind the scenes and go, hey, I don't agree with you. And this is now what we should do. And then have you fix it. To me, that doesn't, I, yeah, that doesn't. I mean, it's not, I mean, I'm, I don't look, understand it was, how that's It was a hypothetical. It's no, not going to happen. But I hear what you're saying and that you need, to, you'd like for me to be, You'd like to feel like I'm on your team more than you feel like I'm on your team at I this point. I feel like I'm, it's, it's me versus you and the girls. Well, okay, but I don't I don't feel that way. So I feel like I try to listen to both sides and then see which one is most. I feel like I'm yeah, the yeah, middle. Yeah, yeah, man. yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's like that's, I'm in the that's what I'm talking about. It. I, when you f- listen to both sides and see which one, then I feel like it. I don't know. I just feel like it's always been. I don't know. Maybe we should ask somebody professional what you should do I would in those love situations. Your family therapy. Because the thing is, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. If I really genuinely don't agree with your point of view, how do I move well, my forward? My point of view is my point of view sometimes is uh just I, because I it's get yours a, doesn't mean get, it's right. And just because it's mine doesn't mean it's right. No, but I I I, I don't want to get into any of the issues we've ever had. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like I don't know. I I, I would just love I don't need you to be a hundred percent on my team, but like maybe 85, 15, <laughs> maybe, maybe 75, 20, 25. Like just, just all uh, 65, 45. It's so funny. I feel like I am on your team. 45. Until, and then uh, yeah, give, give it 110. 
I mean, what am I going to do? I don't. I, am I really not going to drink tonight? Sixty-five, forty-five. Right. I'm looking. Yeah, to see you're if- not drinking tonight, babe. <coughs> you're cl- on a cleanse. Sorry. Would you like some hot tea? That's my option. I got hot tea and a fucking granola bar. Oh, good. I think, I think you should. You should party now and do a cleanse when you get back on the bus with everybody. They all That's need. A, they all right. need a fucking cleanse. You, they all need a cleanse. You should buy everybody this cleanse and have all do it together, and then yeah. you can suffer together. Oh, yeah. I will. I will. Oh, you will. If I can start partying right now. Oh, well, that's what I would, I mean, I don't know. No, I'm going to order all, I'm going to get it all for us and we'll do it the second week. I'll do it again. I'll just take a Xanax tonight. <laughs> Fucking Ambien. I oh, drug myself God, so I don't Oh my eat. God, so unhealthy. Why don't you just be? I'm just be. So wait, can you smoke a cigar? Yeah. Well, let's do that then. Yeah. Smoke a cigar and have like a smoke kombucha a weed. or smoke some, some other weed. shit. I can't have a kombucha. I can smoke some weed. Smoke a cigar, take an Ambien and a Xanax. Oh and this God. cleanse is perfect. Definitely, I should definitely stomach, be on your team at this point. <laughs> is this what I should is, be on my your team? Is going fucking nuts. You've got to be starving. No, I'm, I'm, is that what is that hungry? Yeah, you're starving. So what are you allowed to eat on this cleanse? I'm allowed, I get one granola bar and a cup of tea. And then I get... Uh, it doesn't, it's I like understand. a soup. It's, it's, it's in the next room. I'll show you when we get done. I'll show you much, what... How, like how much volume is it? How much a thousand volume? calories. That's not... I mean... How do you go from what you ate? From drinking 3,000 calories. Lacey. You drank 3,000 calories in wine. Lacey. And then ate whoever knows how much. Lacey calculated that I took in roughly 5,000 calories yesterday. Mm-hmm. She was like, I, I'm just watching. That's pretty it. hefty. And she, Because, well, I burned like 4,000 working out and I gained three pounds. You gained three pounds yesterday? Yesterday. I woke up three pounds heavier today. And then I was like, I was like, Fucking all I had was pho. I can't figure and out why. I, yeah, I said why. I, all I had was pho and fucking a meatball. Well, maybe two. You did put stuffing in your pho. I did and, put stuffing and, in my And pho. you did microwave a a conglomeration of cheese and wrap it in seaweed and eat it as I a roll. I made covered in mayonnaise. Cheese. I, I forgot I made Did you put cheese. that on your list for Lacey? I forgot about ah. it. Well, Lacey said, I, I just want to point out, as I was walking out, you were eating cheese by the spoonful. And I was like, oh, I was. Might have been out of control. And she goes in, and she goes in. Didn't you make? Did someone say you guys made uh, sushi out of that? And I was like, Yeah, we made cheese sushi. We covered it in mayonnaise and then baked it. I was like, I did do that. She's like, How much wine did you have last night? And I was like, Well, you know, it was a party night. She's like, I know. I'm not. I'm not. I'm just. I'm not accusing you anything. I'm just saying, like, if we're counting calories. And I was like, I have fucking bunch of wine. And I was like, I probably had about fucking six thousand five thousand calories and so to go from five thousand to one how many calories are in a bottle of wine it's like 25 30 2500 it's probably a thousand i don't know i don't that's a really good question i don't know how many calories are in a glass of wine there's about five glasses of wine in a bottle so that's okay i'll I'll be fine tonight i'm gonna do i'm gonna get on the treadmill again moderation those boundaries I i don't have moderation yeah, no. Well, I think this was a good conversation about daughters. How do you feel about it? Anything you'd like to add? I'd like to block my daughter from listening to it. Why? I don't want her to hear it. Why? Because. Too vulnerable? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think, I don't know that Lily listens anyway. Um, I don't doubt Georgia knows how to download a fucking podcast. Georgia has a podcast. Oh, wait. <laughs> Georgia has a podcast? Georgia has a At podcast. school, yes. Part oh. of her journalism class. Yes, to do oh, a that podcast. Makes sense. Fucked. Um, oh yeah, podcasting is journalism. Yeah, it's journalism. Oh. She she has a podcast at school um, that she does. I think once a month they do a little. It's like fifteen minutes long. It's nothing long. It's like a report of what's happening at school kind of podcast with another girl f- from school. Um, is there anything? Yeah. That's crazy. It feels good. I I want to ask a question, but I don't know if you guys are gonna like it. Um, Go ahead. If if always- your daughter could really hear you. Like was a pure spirit, hmm. no things. If she could really hear you, what like would hear, you listen objectively? Yes. What okay. would you want her to know? What would you want to say? If she could really hear That's you. It. I love her. That's it. Yeah. But I love her more than anyone's gonna ever fucking love her in life. <laughs> that she should need to know. Now that. you look like a psycho boy. No one's ever gonna love her as much as I love her ever, <laughs> fucking ever. And I'm only trying to fix her and make her better. Fix her. Uh, not She's fix not her, not broken. Fix her, not fix her, but like oh I'm trying God. to get her. I'm trying to make things great for her. I want. I'm trying to make things great. That's it. I just want to make things great. You. Just, One of the great things to do is hang out with your dad. 
and fucking spend time with your dad and giggle and have fun with your dad. It's really awesome. What you're trying to do is make her the best Georgia she can be. I want to make her the best Georgia so she, she can, can be. hang out with you. And part of that is hanging out with me and spending time with me. You're right. Maybe she shouldn't listen to this. <laughs> she shouldn't listen to this. She's going to be like, my dad's a fucking, she already thinks I'm a fucking psycho. Uh, it's pretty adorable, though. It was, it's really, I tell her this all the time. I'm going to get to yours in just a second. But I tell her this all the time. I say to her, what happened when Georgia showed up? I tell her all the time she gave me my heart. Like, I didn't really know what love was until I had a baby. I mean, I knew what it was in, uh, in the level that you can, but Georgia gave me my heart. Ali gave me myself. I didn't understand myself until I had myself. Yeah. And then, but Georgia gave me my heart, and I said, you don't understand what you did to your dad. Your dad had no idea what love was until you showed up. Your dad spent... Every minute he was at home with you, he took you to Trader Joe's. He sat you on the counter while oh. he cooked. He <laughs> he w- walk you down the street, round the block. Just the two of you before Isla was born, you guys were inseparable. When I was working, you and your dad were together every waking moment. And you were that way until he started traveling on the Travel Channel constantly. And I said, unfortunately to Georgia, you probably don't remember it. Because you were six when he went, five when he went to work on Travel Channel. So all this intense connecting and bonding and love that happened from your dad, you're probably too young to remember. But he remembers it. He loves it and cherishes it. And really, it means so much to him. So when he gets upset about things, remember, it's coming from that well of love and emotion that started when you were so young. And it's from such a pure place. So you just have to remember that. I tell her that all the time. I was like, there's no way, there's no reason why you should remember it. No kid remembers their threes and twos. Nobody remembers that age. But that's real for your dad. It's very real for him. Um, And it's still, he still sometimes, I think, connects to that time period when you two were inseparable yeah that's the it's my big fuck up is that i i want the things that she'd never do again like i want i want well uh, she shouldn't do that again what no, if i did that with my dad that would be weird i dated a girl who sat on her dad's lap all the time and i thought it was odd it's i say is there you've moved into a different phase your relationship should be about golf and and playing board games that's what i'm talking be about, about me and being fun and have, having fun and being funny but Steven, what would you want yes. Lily to hear? Um uh, yes, of course that I love her, you know, uh, uh you know. They I tell the kids all the time, you won't understand the way your parents love you until you have kids, if you have kids. Yeah. Yeah. Like you just won't get it, so just and it's okay that you don't. So, but of course I would want her to know and I think she knows that very very well. But I, but I, I don't, I think for some reason, maybe she doesn't think I, um, like I would want her to know I'm thrilled with who she is. Right. Like I love what she's become or becoming Mm -hmm. like whatever that is and whatever else that becomes, um, like, and not just because she gets good grades and she works hard and she doesn't need us to hold her hand through all that, but like. She has so many like amazing qualities mm-hmm. that I don't know. Sometimes I just think she doesn't know about them or like, or she doesn't, she jokes about, you know, being what a great person I am. And she, but she really, really is. Mm-hmm. Really and I don't, I, I, I wish, I, I wish she would know how much I see that more than anybody. Right. Probably even more than, even more than her mother, because, you know, Kathy and and she can butt heads on certain things, just mother daughter butting heads. Mm-hmm. And I'm her dad, so I see, I see everything that's like beautiful and sweet and princess like, mm-hmm. because I'm looking for that because I want that. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. She is a very lovely human being. Lily is a very kind, compassionate, caring she's person. Kid. She's a super good kid. She's maybe we just gotta find a body swap. 
because it seems like it seems like we have good relations with each other's daughters. So like <laughs> maybe we just body swap. Do no, a body swap comedy. You have a good relationship with your daughter. I have a good relationship with George. I do. I, I you I, have I'm, a great I'm, relationship. I'm, I'm, listen, with I, your yeah, I'm not. I'm. I don't want anyone to come take the take away and think that things are catastrophic they're not absolutely it's just not. That from not time to time from no. time to time you get in this thing where you're like what the fuck is this shit yeah you know, i would just like to be having more fun and laughing more. yeah yeah like, that's it yeah i don't feel like i don't feel like you know i can't wait till they can start drinking wine oh, we're gonna they're gonna fucking love me when they can drink no this is just a natural thing that happens with teenage girls and their dads it just happens yeah. and it yeah. fucking sucks for you it really sucks for you i don't like it for you yeah. I wonder, but it's pretty normal i guess my sister had that with our dad i gotta ask her i wonder you should ask her because it i'm telling you how many women bert's had on his podcast or he texted somebody mistakenly like some really sweet heartfelt oh, thing to georgia yeah. and she texted back was like i wish my dad had talked to me like that i was a complete asshole everybody was to their dad this is so normal yeah. and i think it is i think your our kids are in the grand scheme of things really awesome they're not anything negative no or bad. i think we're pretty lucky uh, yeah, our, are. Who, who our kids are becoming I you know, it, so this is, you know, this may, it may come off to a lot of listeners, like a bunch of, you know, whining dads, like, oh, I wish my kid was little again. I do. But at the same time, that's not really realistic. I just, I want to do, I want to make sure I'm doing better and. um, Having fun and laughing. That's yep. the thing. Having fun and laughing. You'll get there. <laughs> You should go eat something. I'm going to go eat something. Okay. Thank you guys for Thank being you. on my podcast. Thank you. Pleasure. 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 Pleasure.